Regional, game number three, with the Islanders leading the series two games to none. Tonight, we're at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, Long Island. It's game three of the Stanley Cup Final on USA. Tonight's game is brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. By Mobile Detergent Gasoline for your everyday driving needs. By Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. And by Levi's Jeans, Cords, and Shirts for quality and style you can't count on. Good evening, everybody. I'm Al Albert, sitting in for Al Troutwig on another assignment, along with Dan Kelly and Gary Green, and welcome to game number three of the Stanley Cup Finals. What looked to be a dream series has turned into a nightmare for the Edmonton Oilers. The Islanders going into Edmonton and stunning the Oilers in the first two games. Now they come home for games three and four and have the chance to shock the Edmonton Oilers in four straight games on way to a fourth straight Stanley Cup. You know, coming into this series, there are those who felt that the Islanders, although they won three Stanley Cups in a row, were the underdog as the Oilers were romping in the playoffs. They had won 11 games and lost just one. They had outscored their opposition 74 to 33. That's six goals a game. But the Islanders have confused the Oilers. They've frustrated them. They have held them to combine three goals in the two games. And right now are licking their chops as they come home to the Nassau Coliseum. Well, licking their chops right now, getting ready to bring you all the action. Dan Kelly and Gary Green. And let's go to them for their pregame comments. Okay, Al Albert. Gary, what have the Islanders done to the Oilers to stop them from scoring all those goals? Billy Smith has got a lot to do with that, Dan, and we know what Billy Smith has done in the last two games, but I think looking at the whole Islander Hockey Club, the forwards have really broken up a lot of the plays. They've been doing a great job, close checking-wise. The defense, they've been standing up. They've been stopping them at the blue line a great deal of the time, but in their own end zone, they've always been getting a piece of the body. That is the Islander end zone, and that is difficult for the Oilers to play in that style of game. I wonder if the Oilers are not thinking too much about Billy Smith. The best way to treat Billy Smith, I would be thinking, would be to score some goals against him. No question about that. That's the only way you're going to upset Billy Smith. Right now, the Oilers really have to get all of their concentration right on playing their game, their skating style, their passing, finishing off. Forget about Billy Smith right now. There's no use trying to go for his head or try and spear him. You're only going to end up in the penalty box or really not concentrating on what you have to do best and that is win a game here tonight. As Glenn Sather told me earlier today, we have to play our game, and their game in Edmonton all season long has been a passing and a skating game. Back to you, Al. Well, Dan, the numbers certainly stacked up against the Oilers only twice before in Stanley Cup final history, that is, since they've had a seven-game format, as a team come back from a 2-0 deficit to win the Cup. Also, the Islanders, on their march to three straight Stanley Cups, have never lost a home game in the finals. That's against the Oilers coming into tonight. We got this game won. Yeah, you got to buy a light beer from Miller. Yeah. Let's let's Philly. One out to go. Yeah, what can he do to his mouth? Hey, I'll uh, keep the change. Here's Rodney! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Finch is 
left. Here I am. Come on, Lee! Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Hey, wait a minute. This game isn't over yet. I caught that ball. Just about ready to go. Game number three of the Stanley Cup Finals. Not only have the Edmonton Oilers not beaten the Islanders during these finals, they haven't beaten them all year. In three regular season games, the Islanders won all three. So you add on the two games now during the finals. The Islanders are 5-0 and oh this year against the Edmonton Oilers. And oddly enough, four of those victories came in Edmonton. And in doing so, the Islanders have held Wayne Gretzky intact. No goals, two assists in this final series. And now we are ready to go with the national anthem. Everybody rising at the Nassau Coliseum. And here is the anthem. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that. Mr. Joe Dewar with the National Anthem here at the Nassau Coliseum. Game three of the 1983 Stanley Cup Final. The referee, Brian Lewis, will be the referee. The two linesmen will be Ron Finn and Ray Scampanello. The starting goaltenders for the Edmonton Oilers. Andy Moog, 14 playoff games this year. 11 wins, three losses, a 2.90 goals against average. And for the auditors, it is Billy Smith with 15 games, 11 and 3 at 2.85 goals against Mark. So the goals against averages are very close. They're equal in win. But in this series, Billy Smith and the auditors lead it by a two game to nothing margin. Well, we will see whether the Oilers will be able to come up with a fine effort tonight. They are overdue. I doubt very much that anyone would have suspected that the Oilers would be down two games to none coming into the Nassau County Coliseum. Here are the Oilers getting immediate possession, and Gretzky shoots it in. Hot pass, shooting it right back out, and Lee Fogelin drops it to his own line. The Oilers now attack, led by Glenn Anderson. Fired it in high off the glass. Dennis Potva back to pick it up. Cleared it on the right wing. Low came in and knocked Bossy down. And the puck comes into the Oilers zone with Lee Fogelin. The Oilers team captain back to get it to Yerry Curry. Curry on left wing to Low. Low at center to Curry. Curry to Glenn Anderson. He's checked in the play and circling is Stepan Pearson for the Oilers. Got it on the board. Knocking it down now. Gretzky shot it right through the goal free. Nobody there to tip it in. Islanders clear it. Here's Fossey to center. Gretzky checks Fossey. Now Ken Morrow at center ice. A long bouncer. Moe got to the net to clear. Big rebound. Bob Bourne got to it. But shot wide. Now Morrow. His shot blocked. And Messier feeds it to Curry. He missed it. But Lindsman picks it up. Kenny Lindsman. Taken out of the play by Potvac. Now back come the Islanders with Brent Sutter, the hero of game two. He shoots it in for New York. Messier back to get it. Checked by Dwayne Sutter. Don Jackson cleared it on the boards. Now Brent Sutter into four check on Lindstrom, and the Oilers come out of there. Don Jackson to center ice, shooting it in. Thomas Johnson back to get it to Bob Bourne. That's cleared to center. Lindstrom back near his own line to Jackson, back to Lindstrom. He had to chase back after it to Mark Messier. 
who's been bothered with a shoulder problem throughout the series. Johnson shoots it back in. This is Donald Jackson, number 29. Jackson headmanning it on right wing to Lindstrom. Lindstrom at center ice to Jackson. In across the line to Ray Cote, broken up and shot by Potvin into the Oilers zone. And Moog is out of the net to clear it around in the boards. Cote trying to flip it out, does at center. Hunter couldn't get it, and back from the auditors, this is Bob Nystrom. Nystrom checked in the play, and now it's Paul Coffey, number seven for Edmonton. Coffey got it to the auditor line, back from New York. Here's a pass to Canelli, shooting! Moog looked in behind him, but he made the save, but wasn't too sure about it. For our local affiliates, we'll pause here. You're watching Stanley Cup Hockey on USA. Discover a fresh new approach to condominium living at Spring Creek. Mick Bryden's son understands the way you live. And at Spring Creek, you can choose from four luxurious models designed to suit your modern lifestyle. Enjoy the swimming pool, clubhouse, tennis courts, and lake. These award-winning condominiums are so beautiful and so affordable. Privacy, individuality, and affordability. McBride understands the way you live. Hi, I'm Bob Allen, and I host a program each week called The Last of the Silver Screen Cowboys. Join us for exciting adventures with your Western heroes of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Last of a fast dying breed. Cattle grazing. To Kevin Lowe, headmanning it at center ice for Dave Lumley. And Lumley shoots it into the auditor's zone. And a spot back to get it. Cleared it. Vogel knocks it down. Now picked up by Clark Gillis. At center ice for the pass to Dwayne Sutter. And a wrist shot is just wide. Back comes Lumley, number 20. Flipping it for Dave Semenko. That hit the linesman, and as a result, the play went offside at the New York Islander Blue Line. Dave Semenko, the policeman for this Edmonton Oiler Hockey Club. He has been playing on a fourth line with Tommy Ralston and Lumley. The Oilers have been going with four lines, whereby the Islanders have pretty much stuck with their three lines using Merrick and Carroll. Carroll especially, killing penalties. Merrick saw a little bit of ice time during the first two games. Here's Brian Trotje, who's dominated this series by winning faceoffs. He wins another one. Back to Pearson, now to Trotje, over to Bossy. Bossy got it to center, was checked in number 17. Gary Curry drops it to Charlie Huddy. Around in the boards to Coffey. Pearson held it in. To Trotje, to Keller. This shot blocked by Huddy. Now centered, Bossy was too well checked in front of the net. Dave Longevin trying to get it in front. Andy Moog pokes it away. And here's Gretzky working it to Anderson, number nine. His shot is a high one that went over the glass, up into the crowd. That one didn't even come close. Billy Smith just ducked. Glenn Anderson blasted it with all of his strength, but his strength on that shot was somewhat wasted as that puck ends up high up in the stands. Glenn Anderson injured in game one, but skating well here in the early going tonight. This game is authorized under television rights granted by the National Hockey League and is presented solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, and other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Hockey League is strictly prohibited. Right from the faceoff, we had an offside. There you see Ken Morrow, the native of Flint, Michigan, played college hockey at Bowling Green, and of course, played on the United States gold medal winning team, has been on three Stanley Cup winners here with the Islanders. I guess you might call him a winner. <laughs> no question about that. Shot in by Jackson. Going back is Thomas Janssen. He cleared it to Bourne. And their four checking is Greg as he pinched in for the point. Now Messier comes in. He's going to get a penalty on that last play. Penalty coming up on the play down in the corner. With the score, the Islanders nothing, Edmonton nothing. We'll pause here. Penalties on those 
last play to both Messier and the Islanders super high sticking to Brent Sutter. Here is Bob Bourne with each team a man short. Jackson shot at the center. Thomas Johnson clearing it into Bob Bourne. This is Bourne trying to center one. Could not, and Randy Gregg for Edmonton beats Kenny Lindsman. Lindsman leaving it for Willie Lindstrom out of Jackson. Back to Lindstrom. Lindstrom stick handling and holding on to the puck. Lindstrom number 19 shoots one. Smith handles that and Morrow takes over. Smith was knocked down on the play and Smith bangs his stick on the ice in disgust because no penalty was called. Somebody knocked Smith down and now the play is called on an offside at the Edmonton Blue Line. Smith and the Islanders and their fans are upset. Well, it was Ken Lindsman, I believe, the oiler player that knocked Billy Smith right on his can, and he wasn't too happy about it. Let's take a look at it. We see Lindsman coming around behind that net. He had obviously utilized his stick in order to pull the feet right out from underneath Billy Smith, and Billy Smith really showed some signs of anger. Each team a man short. Messier off for elbowing. Brent Sutter for high sticking. 4-0-1 the time as the Islanders come close. Now Gretzky checked by Dennis Potvac. Here's Potje over to Bossy, but Charlie Huddy intercepts that. Huddy to Anderson. Anderson moving in on left wing. Anderson is checked, and Bossy tries to break up. Mike Bossy in across the line, drops it to Pearson to Trotje. Shot it in front of the goal. Going to be a penalty here against Edmonton as Coffey comes up with the puck. And now play is called, and a penalty coming up against Glenn Anderson. For our local affiliates, we'll pause here. You're watching Stanley Cup Hockey on USA. Not where you'd expect to find the U.S. Coast Guard, but from New Orleans to East Grand Forks, Minnesota, a lot of folks know them well. Like Captain Robert Hammond, the Coast Guard sets the day markers that guide his riverboat. And when the spring floods hit East Grand Forks, they were there to help Mayor Murray and Chief Dan Fermato. Keeping the Great River moving is a big job. The Coast Guard does it well. A lot of big jobs in the Coast Guard. Maybe one's for you. Hi, I'm Bob Allen, and I host a program each week called The Last of the Silver Screen Cowboys. Join us for exciting adventures with your Western heroes of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Last of a fast dying breed, cattle grazing. Power play. Dennis Potvin leads the rush, shooting it in low back on the boards with Fossey, low clearing it. Johnson now held it in for the Islanders. Again, a play is called. They rule the puck was hit with a hand pass. From one player to another, and play is stopped. Yari Curry, Glenn Fader said that through the course of the season that Yari Curry was probably his best two-way hockey player on his team. Definitely offensively, he has played extremely well with Gretzky this season. Defensively, he has shone as well. The Islanders in the playoffs have 18 power play goals at 24.7 percentage, but in this series, they are 0 for 7. The Oilers also have not scored in the power play. Here's Andy Moog clearing it down the ice, and Dennis Potvac goes back to gut. Here's Potvac. Trying to flip it in, broken up. Now Butch scoring. number 91 has it. Brent Sutter has back on along with Messi. Out there, it's a five against four power play. Here's Goring back of the goal. Jackson rides him out of the play. Puck there, held in by Potvac. Moving in, shooting, and he shot it wide. As it deflected, Thomas Johnson into the corner. Nystrom knocking down Big Jackson. Here's Butch Gorin. Back to Johnson. Now to Nystrom. In front to Gorin. Broken up in Yari Curry. Cleared it away for the Oilers. You notice when the Islanders get possession of that puck in the Oiler end zone on the blue line, they immediately move to that middle ice area. They're also looking to beat Potvin on the point. Islanders lost it, now get it back again as they feed it into Brooks Goring. Goring shooting it in behind the goal. Jackson there for Edmonton. Here's Pinelli getting it to Pearson. Over to Potvac. 
Buck five, back to Pearson, a drive, Moga save, rebound. Jackson trying to cover up. Loose puck still near the Edmonton goal. And Jackson shot it away to Hunter, who cleared up the center. The Auditors came close there. Now Gore, leading puck back. Across the line, Greg shot it away, and now Anderson is back on. Out of the penalty box, a lead pass to Anderson. Goes down into the Auditors zone, Pearson back after it. And an icing call, or an offside call now against the Islanders. We're live in New York on Long Island, and there's no score. I'm Paul Williams, composer and Grand Prix driver. This is the 1983 Celica GTS. Some good-looking car, huh? And excuse the expression, it isn't short on performance. Watch this. That's Paul. That's the Celica. And for 83, the Celica GTS has a new independent rear suspension, electronic fuel injection, and even more horsepower. And you know, when I drive a Toyota Celica, I'm six foot two, Dan Gurney. Sure you are. <laughs> Face-off coming up in the Edmonton zone to the right of Andy Moe. Bob Bourne against Gretzky. Gretzky gets the draw and Fogelin in the scoreless game cleared it back to the net. Teams are back at full strength. Low to Anderson, now to Curry. Gretzky racing after it, but Dave Longevin back to get it for the Auditors. Over to Stepan Pearson. Now to French Sutter. Low intercepting that. Low circle. He's number four for the Oilers. They drop it back to Lee Fogel. Pass ahead to Anderson, going back to Pearson. And the Oilers guilty of icing as they shot it in from their own side of center ice. Faceoff comes back into the Edmonton zone. I think this man's been hurting somewhat. There's a great number of the Islanders that have been hurting, including Dave Langevin. But Stefan Pearson has had some knee problems. Dave Langevin had knee problems. Surprisingly, he has been back in the lineup he was not expected to see any action whatsoever in playoffs. In fact, even his career at one point in time was in jeopardy. Amazing recovery. Number 26, Longevin for the Islanders, a native of St. Paul, Minnesota. Big, strong, defensive defenseman. He can move him out in front of that net. That's why they call him Bam Bam. Here's Paul Coffey. Another type of defenseman, an offensive and puck-carrying defenseman. He almost lost at that time. Now a jam up on the boards. Mark Gillies pinched in against the board by Lindstrom and Coffey as you look at the professor. Al Arbor, coach of the three-time Stanley Cup champion Islanders, trying to put up four pennants in a row here at the Nassau Coliseum. I think Al Arbor tonight, from time to time, would like to get Trache against Mr. Gretzky. I think he likes that matchup, but then again, he's going to play Trotje a great deal, especially utilizing him for face-offs. Right now, Trotje is against Lindsman, and Lindsman feeds Mark Messier. Racing in, Smith the save, and Gillies comes up with the rebound. Couldn't clear it, but the Auditors do cover up, and Bossy cleared it. Here's Thomas Janssen ahead to Bossy. In across the line, Randy Gregg is there to clear it away, and Lindsman circles back. Lindsman to Willie Lindstrom. Broken up now, Messier. For Edmonton, dropping it to Randy Gregg. Ahead to Ken Lindsman. Lindsman number 13, checked by Bossy. And the puck is held there long enough to try and Lewis whistles to play down. They have 11 13 left of the first period. No score. I really think this man right here in game number two, well, he was valuable in all of the games of playoffs, but game number two, he was dynamite on those faceoffs. Just won one faceoff after another. Key faceoffs in his own end zone, especially. Faceoff coming up in the. Islander into the rink, no score. Here's Charlie Huddy at the point. Smith a save. And Smith very nicely cleared or covered up on the rebound. And now, been pushing and shoving in front of the goal. See Gordon Lane there. He had his stick up high. He was making sure that no oiler was going to come back in. Take a look at it. Smith makes the save. He has to go to the splits in order to make the save. Watch Lane just off to her right. Charlie Huddy, the man taking that good hard drive, and again, we see it from another angle. Smith splitting his legs, 
difficult for a move for a goaltender, but you watch. The Oilers will be in there quickly tonight. They're going to probably cause Smith a little bit of aggravation, especially on shots that he is trying to hold to guard against any rebounds. Number 24 for the Oilers is Tom Ralston, a center iceman, a good skating forward on this Edmonton club. Here's Pache as the Avengers from the faceoff in their own zone break out. Trying to feed Butch Goring. Bold off to the side of the goal, was not sure of where the Islander players were, so he held on to it. For our local affiliates, we'll pause here. You're watching Stanley Cup Hockey on USA. One of the main factors for the playoff success of the New York Islanders this year has been the line consisting of the Sutter brothers, Brent and Dwayne, along with Bob Horn. They have accounted for 68 points in 14 games. And Brent Sutter, the hero of game number two with two goals and one assist. And Brent Sutter will be my guest in between the first and second periods. Also a look at the top candidates for the Vezina Trophy, top goalie in the league. Play underway as Paul Coffey lets a shot go. Smith stopped that. The orders with pressure on, but now Potvin was able to clear the zone for New York. Coffey shot it back in, and then the play is called. Another of those hand passes, batting it ahead from one player to another. Well, the Oilers showing a little offensive punch at this point. They, I think, Dan, are skating a little bit better than they did in the last half of the game anyway in game number two in Edmonton. And let's face it, they are going to have to skate for 60 complete minutes in this hockey game here tonight. This game number three, extremely important to them. If they lose this one tonight, I'd say they have got tough trudging ahead in game four. Face off as Wayne Merrick will take the face off just outside the Islander blue line. Merrick is out centering a line with Wayne Sutter on right wing. Mark Gillies on the left side. They're out against the Cote, Hughes, and Hunter line for Edmonton. Here's Clark Gillies. Got it to center, intercepting it there as number 12, Hughes. And the Oilers shoot it in. Pearson. Camaro in there to forecheck. The Oilers, number 12 for Edmonton, doing the aggressive forechecking is Dave Hunter. Now some pushing and shoving. And the Oilers were happy about the way Dave Hunter came in with some aggressiveness. And Pearson, he was in the midst of that. Cote and Hunter. Hunter being the one that was obviously causing the most trouble. Surprisingly enough, Stephen Pearson was in there and he was doing a little pushing. Let's take a look at it. Stephen Pearson and Hunter. Cote originally, but Hunter was the guy that came in there bouncing Merrick. But watch Stephen Pearson. He comes back in there. He was really trying to lay the body on as well. The auditors send out Trotche. There's Stephon Pearson. It was involved in that shoving in the corner. Cote against Trotche. Let's see who wins this. Trotche wins it cleanly and gets it to Smith. Back of the net. Now the Oilers coming up with it. As they send two men in behind the goal. And Smith, as the puck came to the side of his net, was able to grab it and hold on for a faceoff. By the way, if you look at Billy Smith, the leading point getter in this series is Wayne Sutter of the Auditors. A goal and four assists in the first two games. He's had a big playoff period. He really has, Dan, and that line with his brother Brent and Bobby Bourne have been probably the best line for the Islanders during playoffs. This time the Oilers win the draw and work it over to Cote. His shot high and wide, and now Bob Nystrom wears it to center. Merrick racing after it. Vogel and tying Merrick up on the play. Buck is knocked loose back to the goal, and Kevin Lowe gets it for Edmonton. To Ray Cote, number 14. He flips it in. Pat Hughes digging in after it. Now Janssen shooting it around in the boards. Over to Clark Gillies. Now to Nystrom. Bob Nystrom, number 23. Into Clark Gillies. Into the corner to Nystrom. He drops one back. Nobody there, and the puck comes all the way to the Islander end of the rink with Thomas Janssen. And the set up from Billy Smith. Janssen, the little defenseman out of Sweden. Dwayne Merrick. Center to Keller, who tried to clear it in. Keller steals it again, had it only momentarily, and here's Jackson ahead to Gretzky. Johnson back of the goal. Tried to clear it. Oilers hold it in. 
Here is a centering pass. Now Gretzky in behind that net, out in front. Shoots, and Trotte, I believe, went down to block it. Smith was down on the ice. I think Trotte stopped the shot. Back comes Anders Keller. Over to Trotte. Hold the save on that. Now Trotte behind the goal, and Jackson comes up with it for Edmondson. The orders, Dwayne Anderson trying to clear. Knocked down. Bossy dropping it to Longevin. His shot, Moe cleared that aside. And now the puck is shot to center ice and Pearson. Back to clear it to Dave Longevin. He shoots it near the Edmonton line. Don Jackson for the orders. Over to Randy Gregg. No score in this game. Eight minutes left here in the first period. Gary Curry, a high shot. Bob Bourne back together. Held in by Gary Curry. In behind the net, Gretzky going. Billy Smith is there. Cleared it. Now Pearson dropping it back to the net. And the auditors work it to Bob Bourne. Now to Brent Sutter. Over to Bourne. Bourne shot goes off Charlie Huddy and goes away up into the crowd here at the Nassau Coliseum. Wayne Gretzky probably has had the best scoring opportunity of this first period. He came very close to putting that puck in the net. There's the man that had a lot to do with Gretzky not putting that puck in the net. Let's take a look at it now. Gretzky in his favorite position around behind the net. Smith is all the way down, though. Watch Gretzky as he tries to put that puck high up in the air. I believe, Dan, it was Trache, as you had indicated. And then Trache comes all the way back, leading some rushes for his hockey club and almost scores at the opposite end. I guess you could call that doing it at both ends. <laughs> That's the type of player he is. He really is. Here are the orders in this scoreless game. Mark Messier breaks to center. Passing it in on left wing to Lindstrom. Lane tied him up, and then as it was centered, Smith was able to grab it and hold on. And now the faceoff will be in the New York zone. Smith, you can be sure tonight, is going to grab all of those loose pucks close by him, even if it means getting a whistle. They're not the least bit worried about a faceoff in their own end zone, not with Trotche. There we take a look at John Muckler, the assistant coach, he, by the way, is said to say hello to all of his friends back in Providence, Rhode Island, where he spends his time during the offseason. By the way, while we're speaking to locales, congratulations to Indianapolis, who won the Central League Championship. I saw Fred Creighton here today. Of course, they're the Outender Farm Club. And we had a brief visit, and we wanted to mention that a week or so ago, and I think we passed it up. But congratulations to Indianapolis for... The Central League Championship. Buck shot in here by the Islanders. And as Huddy goes back to play at an icing goal on the play against the Islanders. As I mentioned, Indianapolis is the farm team of the New York Islanders. Well, and they are an excellent farm club as well. They've got a young goaltender down there, Dan. He is probably going to be playing in the National Hockey League very, very soon. We take a look at Ken Linsman, who has been fairly quiet in the offensive department. Of course, the whole Oilers have been quiet in the offensive department, but he has not been playing his game. Again, the Islanders have a lot to do with that. Only three goals for the Oilers in two games. Here's Huddy shooting, and that was just wide. Now Wayne Sutter getting it back to the goal. Here's Messier in behind the net, trying to center it. Coffee at the left point, flipping it behind the goal. And Thomas Johnson is there to work it to Dwayne Sutter. Sutter to Brent Sutter. Now over to Bourne, stolen by the Oilers. Messier shot wide. Now Coppy centered it. Here's Mark Messier. Trying to work it to Coppy. He got it in front. Smith cleared it away. And Bob Bourne comes back for New York. Bourne shoots one. Moved the save. Rebound gathered in by Lindsman. Number 13, Lindsman, a pass up the middle to Messier. Messier poke check. Here's Dwayne Sutter for New York. His shot kicked into the corner by Andy Moe. Now Brent Sutter on the board. Holding the puck there, and we have a stoppage in play. Brent Sutter doing a little pushing with a couple of the others. By the way, Brent Sutter will be Al Albert's guest in our upcoming intermission. He had a big game with two goals in game two of the series as the auditors won big in Edmonton. Well, this line really has given the Oilers some problems. They've given all the teams in playoffs this year some problems. Brent and Dwayne uh, with their left winger, Bobby Bourne, who has got just amazing speed. That has turned out to be quite a line combination for the Islanders. Another feature of Al Albert's intermission will be something on 
the best of trophy candidates in the National Hockey League this year. So you'll see some of the top goaltending performances as well in our intermission. No score here in the first period. Puck shot to center by Edmonton and Pearson has it for the Oddities. Passing it ahead to Mike Bossy. Kevin Lowe back to get it. Lowe checked in the play. Now Glenn Anderson trying to hold it against the board. Merrick is there. So is Bossy. And now finally play is whistled down. And the faceoff will be in the Edmonton zone. Brian Lewis, the referee in this game, has let both teams get away with a couple of things here in the early going. He really has, Dan, but he has been consistent both ends, as you mentioned, and really has kept the pace of this first period moving quickly. Wayne Merrick on a faceoff against Gretzky. Gretzky wins the draw cleanly. And Lowe fires it out on right wing. Going back to Longevin. Checked by Yeri Curry to Anderson, now to Gretzky. Gretzky shooting and a glove save by Billy Smith. That's twice that Gretzky's had big chances here in the first period. Smith really had to be quick on that one. Of course, quick he is coming up with a big glove save. Let's take a look at it. Number 99 drills that shot. And Smith coming up with the glove save. Boy, Gretzky really let go with that one. You see how high his stick actually came in the air. That signifies how much power he actually had on that drive. Only two assists, but for Gretzky in this series, but more points in these playoffs than any other player in the history of the National Hockey League in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Puck is cleared around on the boards, and play is stopped again, and we'll have another faceoff. Gretzky. As we look at Butch Goring, 12 goal, 24 assists, 36 points. And that's already a Stanley Cup playoff record, eclipsing Mike Bossy's old mark. But only two assists in this period, and this guy's had a lot to do with that. Butch Goring, as well as his line mates at normal times against Gretzky, John Tonelli and Bob Neister. Well, he can take the rough going as well, Dan. That shows you the type of player he is. There we saw a big hit by Glenn Anderson on Goring. Puck in behind the goal. Dave Lumley coming up with it. Centers it to Kevin Lowe. Got it in front end. Gord Lane knocks it down. Now Lane flipping to Nystra. His shot is wide of the target, but handled by Moog anyway. And Andy Moog held on to it. The National Hockey League Stanley Cup playoffs are coming to you on USA. And this game is scoreless. And at the point, a shot for Edmonton. Now Dave Lumley trying to center it, but Goring cleared it away. And John Tonelli then does shoot at the center ice. Number four, Lowe is back to get it. No score in this game. Low to Fogel, stolen by Butch Goring. Goring now to Nystrom, and that's shot back out by Edmonton. With Dennis Potvac back to control it. Over to Lane. He flips it in. Fogel. Number two for the orders, back to pick it up. Round of the boards to Coffey. Nystrom hammered him into the boards. Now the puck is taken by Gretzky. Over to Yari Curry. Curry moving in. His shot went off. Puck back. The flex into the corner, and Crotche is back to get it. Crotche, a right wing pass to Mike Bossy. Bossy dropping it to Puck back. The auditors work it nicely out of their own zone. Here's Crotche to Tonelli. John Canelli for New York. Canelli centers. Trotte a shot. Moga sprawling save on Trotte. And the Islanders come knocking on the door. It really was a good opportunity for the Islanders. John Canelli, he's been described as some as about as difficult to check as trying to grab a porcupine. He's all knees and elbows. He's really something when he has possession of that puck. But look at that puck as it came right out in front of the net. Gave Andy Moog some real problems. Almost ended up behind him. John Tonelli. And the auditors came very close to scoring. Meanwhile, earlier, Tom Ralston had a chance. Billy Smith made the save, but it dribbled in behind him, and then Gord Lane had to come back and clear it away. No score here in this first period. Randy Gregg for Edmonton, clearing it to Ray Cote. Cote clearing it in. Here's a chance for Pat Hughes. Hughes in front, backhander, and Hunter is robbed by Billy Smith. Now the Islanders come back. Haller trying to shoot it in. Bossy with a drive. Turned aside by Moe. Back is Greg for the order. This pass to Jackson. 
Now ahead to Hunter. Number 12, Dave Hunter, who had a good chance moments ago. And Hughes centering one. Cleared, held in by Greg. Greg shot is blocked from Crunche. For the auditors, feeds Anders Keller. Going back to Greg to get it, and that's an icing call. Because the auditors shot it in from their own side of center ice. Well, Mr. Dave Hunter just had a big chance for Edmonton. He really did, Dan. Some good opportunities at both ends of the ring. Hunter, as you indicated, great opportunity. And then Bossy came right back. Ken Morrow looks like he, perhaps, on the Islander bench right now, is hurting somewhat as well. We know that he came back with some knee surgery. Take a look. As we talked about great opportunity by Hunter. There he is, all alone in front of the net. Billy Smith coming up with a save. The puck bounced off into the corner, and then it came right back. Bossy had a scoring opportunity. The order zone. Here's a chance by Lindstrom blocked at the defense. And now the puck is cleared over the glass and into the crowd. Two minutes, 53 seconds left in the period. There you see Wayne Sutter, a goal and four assists in this series, and the leading point getter with five on either of these teams. He really is an aggressive, determined hockey player, Dan. He's been doing some great corner work for that particular line. Kevin Lowe, defenseman that doesn't get probably a great amount of recognition offensively but pinched very well in the dying parts of the game when the Oilers were trying to get some ground is the second game of this series. Here is Kevin Lowe shooting it in behind the Islander goal. Bourne trying to clear it out of there. Lindstrom knocks it down and now Dennis Potvac flips it to Wayne Sutter. Sutter shooting it in. Here's Bob Bourne in to get it. Now Dwayne Sutter net center. Fogelin intercepting for the Oilers. Ahead to Messier, number 11. Mark Messier never got his shot away as Dennis Potvat played him perfectly. And here's Brent Sutter. Brent Sutter tied up, keeps battling, and now fires it into the Edmonton zone. And Coffey has to go back for it. Coffey to Lindstrom. He missed it, but Lindstrom picks it up. To Semenko on left wing. Big Semenko shooting it in. Up back, back to clear it to Bob Nystrom. Now held in by Lumley. Lumley centering one. Buck comes bouncing back to Coffey. Smith another save. And Smith has come up big again here for the Auditors. Behind the goal is Billy Smith to Pearson. Now shooting it over to John Canelli. Held in. Back to the goal is Pearson. To Dennis Potka. Now to Canelli, and he missed it. The puck went off an Edmonton player, though, so there'll be no icing. A minute and a half left in a scoreless first period. Hoppy shot at the center. Look back in by the editors, and the play is offside at the Edmonton Blue Line. A minute and 26 seconds remaining in this first period of play. Surprisingly, that line of Ralston, Semenko, and Lumley in game number two had some good scoring opportunities. Glenn Sather seems to be playing them a fair amount, almost getting a regular shift out here for the Oilers right now. Goring is now up against Wayne Gretzky, and again, Al Arbor doesn't really seem to care who he has playing against Gretzky. I had said earlier that Trache, I thought, was getting more ice time against Gretzky, but I think they're pretty confident that all their center icemen can play against 99. Right now, they have Goring, Canelli, and Nystrom up on the forward line against the Gretzky Curry Anderson line. And for the most part, that's the line the editors have had out, as Gary points out. But numerous times, Arbor and the editors have used another line. Here's Jackson shooting it in for Edmonton. Smith back of the net leaves it for Thomas Johnson. Now to Tonelli, a bad bounce off the boards. Goring covers up to Tonelli. John Tonelli, number 27, knocked down by Don Jackson. And the Oilers break out three on two. Anderson to Gretzky. Gretzky over to Curry, and the play is offside at the Islander blue line. Now Jackson and Tonelli back at center ice. Almost get into it. Now Gretzky and Tonelli have some work. Tonelli's pretty disciplined. He likes to bang away in those corners. He's a pretty determined hockey player, as we see right here. He's down on his rear and then right back up again. But he is disciplined in the fact that he's not going to take too many bad penalties. And when he goes down, he goes down hard, but he doesn't stay there too long. A minute and two seconds now left in Curry at one. The Islanders nothing, the Oilers nothing. The Oilers have had the best scoring chances, but have had 
some Billy Smith problems. There's the National Hockey League president John Ziegler at the game here tonight. Puck shot in by the auditors. Third by Moog on the boards. Pache knocking it down to Morrow. In front of the goal. Haller was checked before he could shoot. And here's Anderson breaking up. Anderson, number nine for the order. Centers. Gretzky couldn't get a stick up as Crotche had him tied up. Now Crotche couldn't clear it out of there. Gretzky centers one. Harry Curry in front of the net. There's a loose puck and Boss, he came back to clear it away. That was in behind Smith. Now a shot blocked by Morrow. He cleared it and there's a two on one Islander break. Bossy shooting, Mold to save, they score! Anders Keller on the rebound. As oftentimes happens, we go from one end to another. The Oilers had a great opportunity, but unfortunately it caused a two on one with Bossy and Caller, Bossy getting away the drive. Let's take a look at it right from that slot area over to the side. He gets, first of all, the wrist shot. The rebound comes out. Caller there being the man on the spot and puts it behind Moog. Meanwhile, Bossy at the other end had made a save in behind the goaltender Smith. We saw Trotte do that earlier. And then Bossy came back to set up the goal, and it's a one to nothing Islander lead. Way underway. Buck in the center ice area as Lee Fogelin now comes up with it. He shoots it near the auditor line. Pearson firing it back in for Dwayne Sutter. His shot goes wide of the goal, and the buzzer goes to end the first period. That late goal by Anders Keller, assisted by Bossy and Morrow, that came at 19.41 of period number one. Coming up in our intermission, Islander forward Brent Sutter. He's one of the Sutter brothers, and he'll visit with Al Albert in our intermission. The score after one period of play, the New York Islanders won, Edmonton nothing. Mom? In period to the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, game number three of the Stanley Cup Finals, and the Islanders with a 1-0 lead over the Edmonton Oilers, scoring with just 19 seconds to go in that first period. And they lead Edmonton by the score of 1-0. One, one of the big reasons for the success of the Islanders in the playoffs has been the play of the Sutter brothers, Brent Sutter, 20-year-old, from Viking, Alberta, the hero in game number two with two goals and one assist. The line has uh, counted for 64 points in the 18 playoff games. And out of Viking, Alberta, how far is that from Edmonton? Well, it's about 70 miles straight east from Edmonton. Any uh, special satisfaction, uh, what you're doing now to the hometown uh, Oilers, especially the, the two games in Edmonton? Well, special you know, satisfaction about the whole thing is win the Stanley Cup. Uh, you know, that's what we're set out to do, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can accomplish that. Brent, a question. What is, uh, you think, more difficult, perhaps beating the Oilers in the Stanley Cup or getting tickets for the whole uh, clan, the Sutter clan uh, in the Edmonton Arena? Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of people to get uh, tickets for, but, uh, uh, you know, the hardest <laughs> part is beating the Oilers naturally. You know, they've got a great hawk team. Uh, they skate very well. They move the puck well. Uh, you know, they get back strong in their own end, and uh, we got to play really heads-up hockey against them. This first period seemed to be, as far as the Islanders are concerned, scripted for uh, ultimate frustration as far as uh, the Oilers are concerned. It, it appeared as if somebody up there is watching out for Billy Smith, and then uh, with the Oilers getting many opportunities, Islanders with just 19 seconds to go come back and strike. Well, we have to be happy coming out of it, one nothing. Uh, you know, I think we're a little tight coming out. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, just maybe being at home in the finals. Uh, you know, that's it's natural. Uh, we'll come out stronger in the second and third, and we'll play a lot. You know, our game. Could you see the Oilers being very frustrated? They had many golden opportunities for goals. And after that last one, the uh, puck rolling towards the net and, and uh, the Islanders come back and score. Well, Smitty is playing really well for us. And, uh, you know, we need that uh, playoff goal team. And uh, as we all know, Billy Smith is a playoff goal tender, and he gives us what we need. And, uh, you know, we'll score our goals, but we need Smitty to keep him out too. And that's exactly what he's doing. Brent, with two uh, games in your pocket now, has your strategy changed at all here in game three? 
None at all. We just got to keep going, playing our game, and uh, go after game three, and uh, you know, and then go from there. Uh, like I said before, Hampton got a good hockey team, and we got to play very smart and uh, good positional hockey against them. And uh, if we do that, we'll, you know, we'll be all right. Wayne Gretzky has not scored a goal yet in this playoff series. In the three games during the regular season, Gretzky had one goal. So in five games against the Highlanders this year, Wayne Gretzky, one goal. What has been the secret to stopping the great one? Well, there's no really secret. Uh, we all know, you know, what kind of hockey player he is, and uh, we, uh, you know, you, you spit, you know, pay a little special attention to him and uh, you know watch him uh, and uh, try to you know outsmart him it's hard to do but uh, if you, you know if you play uh, heads up against him uh, you'll do all right against him. Well in games uh, one and two the stick swinging incidents involving Billy Smith and several of the Oilers anything said in the Islander locker room about that coming into game number three? And none whatsoever. Uh, you know, that's that's in the past. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, Smitty, uh, you know, it wasn't done purposely. Uh, you know, it got all blown out of proportion. And, uh, you know, Smitty, you know, all he was going for was, you know, he naturally just got to poke check the guy from behind the net. And, uh, you know, I think it's proven that, it, you know, everybody says what, you know, what kind of vicious swing he has. But uh, that's the way Billy Smith plays. And you're not going to change his style. And uh, I don't care who you are. It's not going to bother Billy Smith at all. Are you keeping your eye out on any of the Oilers who may try to retaliate? Well, none whatsoever. If they retaliate, they'll go in the calling box, and then we'll have a power play. For uh, Brent Sutter, it has been a, a season a little rocky during the regular season, but everything coming together now during the playoffs on a line with your brother Dwayne and with Bobby Bourne. What got it all together? Well, I, I don't know really what it was. We got together when uh, Clarkie got hurt, and I uh, heard it hurt himself and uh, Borny coming in our line and uh, we was about four games left going regular season and uh, you know everything just seemed to click uh, I don't know what what it was it just seemed to go and uh, you know we're, we live fairly close together back in western Canada and uh, we kind of know each other inside out and that really helps and you know we kind of know where each other is on the ice and uh, you know it, it helps and uh, we've carried on through playoffs and you know hopefully we can continue to carry on. Is it that or perhaps does Brent Sutter fit in with the uh, playoff tradition of the Islanders because it was last year that you really came along then on a line with the Gillies. Well, playoffs was, uh, you know, hard for me last year. Uh, you know, I didn't play much uh, fourth line and uh, spot duty, but, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's what, you, you know, you got to go with that. Uh, you know, that's what happens when you just step into the league and you never played in the playoff uh, game before in the National Hockey League, you know, especially within your calendars. And, uh, they, uh, you know, they, they really want you to just to stride in and, uh, you know, get your experience and everything. And, uh, you know, I think uh, last year's really helped me out this year. 20-year-old Brent Sutter, our guest in between the first and second periods, one of the heroes for the Islanders during these playoffs here in 1982-83. And Brent, for joining us, we have for you a pair of Levi's cords in any one of 15 handsome colors. Levi's cords, the pants famous for walking the perfect line between jeans and slacks, only from Levi's Jeanswear. Coming up next, in between the first and second periods, a look at this year's candidates for the Vezina Trophy, the best goaltender in the National Hockey League during the regular season. Okay, the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. In game number three, it's the Islanders one and the Edmonton Oilers no score. And with the season coming to an end, the NHL ready to give out the hardware, the awards for the 1982-83 season. One of the oldest, the Vezina Trophy, best goaltender. Here are the top candidates. The NHL regular season, a grueling 80-game schedule that can thoroughly exhaust any player, especially the men minding the nets. Night after night, in city after city, they're shot on like clay pigeons. On such night, it can be one of the loneliest feelings an athlete can experience. But their efforts don't go unnoticed. Every year, the general managers of each of the 21 NHL clubs collaborate to award the Vezina Trophy to the goalkeeper adjudged to be the best in his position. In addition to the trophy, the winner takes home $1,500 in prize money. One of the standouts in the 82-83 campaign was rookie Kelly Lindbergh of the Philadelphia Flyers. Lindbergh's 2.98 goals against average was fourth best in the league. Along with Bob Froze, Lindbergh led the Flyers to an outstanding regular season. Andy Moog also turned in an impressive season, posting a 33-8-7 record. Moog's clutch net minding has brought Edmonton to the Stanley Cup Finals. 
In New York, Islanders had the two best net miners in the league, a feat which won them the Jennings Trophy. Veteran Billy Smith getting better with age, finished with a third best average in the league. And he had a chance to share the load in the Islander net this season with Roly Melanson, who stepped in with some inspired play. In 44 games, he turned in the league's best save percentage and the second best goals against average. His timing couldn't have been better for the Islanders as they struggled through their toughest regular season in three years. Though these men performed miraculous feats, there was one who rose above the best. His heroics inspired his fans to find the words to describe his play. Pete Peters of the Boston Bruins turned in one of the finest years a goaltender has ever recorded in the NHL. Playing in his first full season for the Boston Bruins, Peters led the league in shutouts, in victories, and goals against average. Peters was acquired from Philadelphia in June of 82, where he'd been a part of that club's historic 35-game unbeaten streak and an overall record of 29-5-5. But his theatrics did not stop there. While in Boston, Peters mounted a 31-game consecutive win streak. That was the second best in NHL history. His coach, Jerry Cheevers, still holds the mark at 32. Most important to Peters was that he was allowed to play goal the way he knows best, roam the crease area, and use his stick when necessary. It made Peters... After one period of play, it's the New York Auditors won. The Edmonton Oilers nothing. The only scoring play late in the period. Anders Keller's third goal of the playoffs at the 1941 mark. The shots on goal favored Edmonton 11 to 10. And the scoring play, it could have happened at the other end, but it came all the way down and... New York score. Well, Mike Bossy was the hero of that first period. Take a look as that puck was headed straight for the empty net. Billy Smith caught out. But this is where it all started then. A two-on-one situation. Edmonton had pressed. Bossy and Caller. Caller right there to pick up that rebound after Bossy. A good wrist shot. Mo made the initial save but gave up too much of a rebound, Dan. And as a result, well, the puck ended up behind him. Caller putting that loose puck in. I thought Edmonton deserved a better fate in that period, Gary, but... Again, Billy Smith is as hot as a firecracker. He really is, Dan. You almost think that the Oilers, they've got to be somewhat frustrated right now. The way that they played in game one of this series, Billy Smith being the answer, I really think they should at least be even in this period, but yet they have to go into the dressing room once again, probably with their heads down somewhat, knowing that they're one goal down again. How about Mike Bossy? He's the guy that got in behind Billy Smith and stopped the original shot by Edmonton, and then comes all the way up and gets an assist on the go-ahead goal. That shows you a little bit about the concentration of the Islanders, Dan. Even the great goal scorers like Mike Bossy, they still worry about their own end zone and are right there quickly to help out and even help out their goaltender. And Bossy's got to be credited with saving that goal. It would have been Edmonton 1 and the Islanders 0 at that point in time. Meanwhile, Gary, I think the Oilers are playing better hockey, uh, much like they did in game one in this game tonight. You know, Dan, they almost look like a little, they're a little looser, and they're, uh, they're skating, they're doing things the way that they're capable of doing things, and right now, even though they're down, I still think they played a pretty good period of hockey. So now we go to the second period. at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, the home of the New York Islanders. Islanders won the first game of the series 2 to nothing. The second game 6 to 3, and they lead here 1 to nothing as we await the start of period number 2. The Islanders starting the line of Trotche, Bossing and Clark Gillies, and the Oilers coming right back with their big line of Gretzky, Anderson and Curry. So each team's best head on against each other as the second period begins. This is Lee Fogelin over to Kevin Lowe. Back to Fogelin. The others in possession. Work at the center to Yerry Curry. And Yerry Curry scoops a high one into the New York zone. Anderson digging in, centered it. Smith was Johnny on the spot again and grabbed that pass out in his glove and held onto it. Once again, Billy Smith. Any loose pucks, he's going to grab them. He's going to get that face off. And we know why, as indicated in that first period, Trache is so great on those face offs. Take a look at here that puck coming out. Glenn Anderson really quickly in behind Billy Smith in order to pounce on that puck and put it out in front. Trache won the face off from Gretzky. The auditors born now 
on left wing can't get it out of there as he's pinned in against the boards by Fogler. Brache remains on the ice and will take another face off with Gretzky. Warren is the left winger on this line. He's number 14, the guy you see in the screen now. But both teams going with their best against their best at this point. They really are right now. Some real line juggling continuing to go on by Al Arbor. Brache and Gretzky on the face off. Gretzky gets this draw back to Fogelin. Shot it around behind the net. Glenn Anderson is there, couldn't center it. And Dennis Potvin now tried to shoot it up. Held in. Fogelin off the goal post. But that shot. That had Smith beaten but hit the post. And now it's cleared down the ice by the Abzers. And there will be an icing call against New York. Smith winds up with a broken goal stick. Now Glenn Anderson skating over near Billy Smith, having some words with the Abzer goaltender. And Smith just turned away from him. Well, they say when you're hot, those goal posts and crossbars are always with you. Take a look. It was definitely with the Islanders right here. And Billy Smith, Lee Fogland, winding up with that hard shot right off of the crossbar goal post, right where they joined practically. Take a look at it again. That was destined for the corner had it not hit that goal post. Billy Smith has himself a new goal stick. From the faceoff, the puck dropped unfairly. I got a kick out of one of the Edmonton newspapers yesterday. Everybody has heard of the Sultan of Swat, Babe Ruth, in Edmonton. They call Billy Smith the Sultan of Slash. <laughs> Grace and Gretzky ready on a faceoff. Nobody really wins this faceoff. The orders kick it back. Gary Curry into the corner to Glenn Anderson. Anderson gets it in front. Cleared away by Ken Morrow. Now we're going to have a penalty here against the auditors. Bob Bourne upending Glenn Anderson, and Bourne will get a penalty. And Edmonton will have a power play chance. That's Bob Bourne in the penalty box, a hooking call at the 54-second mark. Well, we see why he gets this for hooking, but look at also the way that the Islanders clog that slot area in front of the net. No wonder the, uh, or the Oilers are having a difficult time scoring goals. Edmonton on a power play. They're 0 for 12 in this series with the man advantage. Here's a shot from the point. Smith a save on Huddy's shot, and he grabbed the rebound. And then Anderson was knocked down and went spinning away from the play. Good save there by Smith on Charlie Huddy. Oh, once again, Smith really looks sharp. That drive coming from the point area by Charlie Huddy. Smith through all of the mass of players that must have been in front of him is still able to keep his eye on that puck. And here's Mr. Trache ready to take yet another face off, a very important one in his own end zone. The order is on the power play in the playoffs, down at 20.3 on the percentage. Here's a chance. Curry shoots, he scores! Gary Curry has just tied this game up. And the Oilers get their first power play of the series. They're now one for 13. And that has to give them some encouragement. It really does. Jari Curry being the man that was right there. The assist has got to go to Billy Smith then because Smith, he will be some upset at himself after making the one save. Take a look. He kicks that puck right out in the slot area to Yari Curry. He will be really angered at himself because that is something that we have not seen Smith do. But he did it this time. The worst possible area to kick a rebound out to right in the slot, especially when the Oilers had a power play. That time Gretzky won the faceoff from Trotje. He gets an assist in the goal. 103 the time, a power play goal, and it's a 1-1 game. Here's Edmonton. Don Jackson shooting it in. Going back to Dennis Potva, rounding the board to Stefan Pearson. Now to Brent Sutter. Ahead at center to Bourne, but Randy Gregg was there to knock it away. Here's Potva. Flipping it in to Brent Sutter. Sutter and Messier in the corner after it. Now in comes Bourne. Randy Gregg gets the puck, however. To Jackson, leaving it for Lindsman. Lindsman tied up by Potva and Pearson. Feeds Bourne as the Auditors come back. Brent Sutter back to Bourne. Bourne, number 14, shoots one. That deflected wide. Now Dwayne Sutter. Cleared it around on the boards. The Oilers race out after it, but Thomas Johnson got back in a hurry. Here's Kenny Lindsman, number 13. 
high flip shot. Smith grabs that. Where did himself? The Dwayne Sutter head manning it to Butch Gore. Flipped it in. Charlie Huddy knocked it away. Huddy being four checked by Tonelli and Cote. Had to drop it back to Coffey. Now to Hunter. Ahead on right wing for Ray Cote. In behind the goal. Smith out of the net and gets help from Morrow. He took the Edmonton player out of the play and feeds Nystrom. Bob Nystrom, number 23. Nystrom. In on the boards, trying to make a play. Drops it to Morrow. Shot around on the board. Foot throwing. In there to Portek. And he and Charlie Huddy hold it against the board for a face-off. A 1-1 game early in the second period here in game three of the Stanley Cup Final. With Al Albert and Gary Green, this is Dan Kelly at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. The Islanders won, Edmonton won. Faceoff coming up in the Edmonton zone. Gretzky wins the faceoff from Trotje and Fogelin. Clears it to Kevin Lowe. Lowe dropping it back to Fogelin again. Now Fogelin on right wing to Yeri Curry. Curry who got that goal is checked. Here's Fosse into Anders Keller. Fogelin checked him, now centered by the Islanders. Moe cleared it away. And the Oilers shoot it down the ice. Johnson back to get it. And that will be an icing call and bring the faceoff back into the Edmonton zone. Well, as we take a look at Mike Bossy, he did not play that first game of this series. He had tonsillitis, but he definitely played the second game, and he scored a very important goal in that game. Played very well, considering he was not at 100%. And he, I think, will probably feel much better in tonight's game after having a few days to recover. There's Trache. He's been brilliant in both of the opening games right now on a face-off against Gretzky in the Edmonton zone. Trache wins the face-off to Lane. A shot. Moga stick save there. Anders Keller now to Trache. Right to center. Moog knocks it away and Fogelin shoots it around to Yeri Curry. Held in by Potva and Fogelin. Fires it out on right wing, and here comes Curry. Dugan Anderson now to Gretzky. Into Anderson. Anderson knocked down, and he and Smith slide into the net, and Potva is going to get a penalty here for pulling down Glenn Anderson. So a penalty against Dennis Potva. For our local affiliates, we'll pause here. You're watching Stanley Cup Hockey on USA. Tomorrow night, game two of the 1983 Major Indoor Soccer League Championships. It comes your way right here on USA as the Baltimore Blast take on the San Diego Soccers. San Diego took care of game one in this best of seven, which now becomes a very important game for the visiting Blast. Ken Cooper will have his charges and gear for this one. Game time, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific for the MISL Championships. Game two right here on USA. Well, the Oilers will have a power play chance. Dennis Potvau holding penalty. 3.42 of the time. The last time Edmonton had the man advantage, they tied this game. And this has been one part of their game that's put them behind the eight ball in this series. It really has, Dan, but let's see what they can do on this one. Here's Huddy's shot block, and it bounces all the way back into the Edmonton zone. Coffee and Huddy are the point men. Their big line of Gretzky, Anderson, and Curry up front. This is Coffee to Charlie Huddy. Now to Yeri Curry, and the play goes offside at the New York Islander blue line. If you look at the guy that has scored the Edmonton goal, Yeri Curry, the native of Finland. The Islanders right now forcing the Oilers practically to go offside. The way that the Islanders stand up on that blue line, even when they're killing penalties, makes it very tough, difficult for a team like the Oilers to carry that puck into the zone. Morrow flips a high one down the ice for New York. Andy Moog out of the goal, feeding Glenn Anderson. Head manning it to Paul Coffey. Coffey number seven. Drops it now to Curry. Back to Glenn Anderson. His shot, that's a six save. Gretzky has the puck on the board. Centers one out, tipped away, held in by Anderson. Now to Curry, to Anderson behind the net to Gretzky. Gretzky hit it with a high stick. It comes to Huddy, back to Gretzky. Gretzky out in front, shot it right through the goal tree. On Billy Carroll, 
is there for New York to clear it away. The Islanders really force Wayne Gretzky, number 99, behind that net area. They know that's where he loves to set up, so they attack him immediately. Here's Charlie Hunter leading the Edmonton rush, leaving it for Anderson. His shot, save, Anderson the rebound, gives it to Gretzky. Back to Anderson, Janssen is there for New York, however, and Thomas Janssen flips it and flips it up over the glass into the crowd. 33 seconds left in Potfaz Pedalet. Islanders right now playing very aggressively, not letting Edmonton get set up, and that is something that the Oilers do very well once they get possession of it, and if you give them time, they'll move that puck around and they'll find the openings. That is why they have been so successful all year long on their power play, and naturally they have the players like Gretzky, Anderson, Messier, Curry, that can finish off in front of that net area. Mark Messier will take the face off against Brian Trotje. Messier still suffering from a shoulder problem, suffered in the Chicago series. Trotje wins this draw, and Smith cleared it around to Bob Bourne. Bourne is able to fire it out of there, and Lowe goes back to get it. The Avengers in the playoffs with an 87 percentage on the penalty killing situation. They're one of the best teams in the business at that. Puck shot to center. Gerson firing it right back in. Lee Fogler. Back to pick it up to Lowe. Lowe shooting it on the boards. In there is Bourne to intercept, and he freezes it there. Now Bourne takes a push at Kevin Lowe as play was go. Wouldn't take very much at all. Maybe one extra sub to get these fellas going at it. Hammer and Tom. I'm sure tempers are pretty high coming into this game. They'll be higher right now in the second period. Kevin Lowe coming in there after the whistle had already gone. Take a look at it and adding that extra little bump to Bobby Bourne who objected very much to that extra little bump. And then we see Linsman and Billy Carroll getting their sticks and their arms high, but luckily nothing came about from it. Only a few seconds left in putt fast penalty, as a matter of fact, two. Bourne will take the face off. Just outside the Edmonton blue line. The Islanders won, Edmonton won. Here in period number two. Game number three of the 1983 Stanley Cup final. Messier dropping it to Don Jackson, now to Randy Gregg. Potfa is back on, the Islanders have killed it off. Buck shot to center ice, cleared in. Longevin now trying to shoot it out, and Brent Sutter comes up with the puck, but then the play is called an offside at the Islander Blue Line. The USA Cable Network is bringing you the Stanley Cup Final. In 1935, Easterners came by the busload to discover the West, and along with it, Levi's 501 jeans, the original button fly shrink to fit cowboy blue jeans. Modern travel has changed a bit since then, but the Levi's 501 jeans that won the West still shrink to form that uniquely personal relationship with the wearer, like no other jeans you'll ever own. Levi's 501s, the original blue jeans. Face-off coming up at the Islander blue line, a 1-1 game. The Sutter brothers and Clark Gillies now up front for... New York against Lindsman, Messier, and Lindstrom for Edmonton. Dave Longevin shooting it around on the boards to Dwayne Sutter. Now Pearson over to Clark Gilly. Randy Gregg pinching in from the point. Here comes Longevin. And some more pushing and shoving. And as we alluded to about a minute and a half ago, it would take somebody not saying excuse me to break this into a little bit of a brawl well when you take a look Dan, at that Islander line out there on that particular ship with the two Sutters and Clark Gillies you're right it wouldn't take too much for anything to happen Randy Gregg pinched along the boards coming low as Clark Gillies was trying to get that puck and get possession of it take a look at it way over there along the far board Randy Gregg come barreling down came barreling down and then Clark Gillies objected to it got his stick up high and that's what started the whole episode now the editors make a change Trotje out to take the face off with Linsman
Lindsman is tossed out of the faceoff. Messier takes it, and Trotje wins the draw cleanly. Hot back, clearing it back to the goal. Here's Trotje. Over on right wing to Bossy, and Bossy circles back. Mike Bossy to Bob Bourne, ahead to Hotba. He's knocked down by Messier. The Adder is Trotje, feeding it to Bourne. Bourne moving in, shoots in. That's deflected just wide. Bourne in the corner, gets it to Bossy. Bossy drops it back, Trotje has it at center ice. And clear it to the Edmonton line, and here's Randy Gray. Leading at Edmonton Rock into Messier. Huge one, and he blasted it wide on the short side. And then it bounced off the boards up over the glass. Well, that puck really ricocheted off. I didn't quite know where it went. Let's take a look, though, at some action along the boards. And Dennis Potvan trying to get the puck out again. Sticks very high. Potvan ending up down. But then we come back with some more action. And that shot by Messier went right off the, actually, I believe it went off the, the steel part of the where it holds the plexiglass in, and it ended up rebounding up into the stands. Here's Potva, who was in that collision with Messier moments ago. Back is Kevin Lowell for the order. Shot at the center, broken up, and here comes Butch Goring. Goring number 91. Goring hammered into the boards, and back comes Hunter for Edmonton to Pat Hughes, number 16. Hughes goes wide. Tried to jam it in on the short side, and Smith to say. Now Fogelin shooting, and that deflects wide of the target. Held in by Lowe. Back of the goal, Hughes got it in front. Now it's Hunter. Bumped by Nystrom, but flipped it behind the goal, and we're going to have a penalty here on the play, I believe against Gord Lane of the Islanders. And now Bob Nystrom and Hunter almost got into it. For our local affiliates, we'll pause here. You're watching Stanley Cup Hockey on USA. In between the second and third uh, periods, uh, star-studded intermission will have one of the greatest players of all time. Gordie Howe taking tonight's game in, and he will join me as he watches some of the players uh, passing up some of his playoff marks in this series. Also with a Stanley Cup luncheon tomorrow afternoon, awards being given out. We will have the winner of the Masterton Trophy here in between periods. That along with Gordie Howe next. On that last play, Gord Lane had his elbows up high and elbowing penalty. 7.31 the time. Here's Gretzky trying to center it. Now Bourne on the boards is checked, and Trotje fires it out of there for the auditor. Edmonton on a power play. Copy into the center ice area. Gave it to Anderson. He was checked, and back comes Bourne. Bourne lost it. Here's Copy leading a three-on-two oiler rush. Over to Anderson. Anderson behind the net to Gretzky. Gretzky out in front and fanning on it was Gary Curry who was wide open. Gretzky got the play made from behind the net, but Curry couldn't finish it off. Gretzky seen Curry coming into that slot, really reacted quickly. Close call there for the Islanders. Here comes Copy. Edmonton still on the power play as they center one. Knocked away by Johnson, and he hit it with a hand pass to Billy Carroll. And that calls play back. Number 99, when he gets possession of that puck behind the net, he sees the whole ice surface. That's why he loves to play there. We saw Yari Curry coming into that slot area. Coffey, he was the one that started the rush initially. Let's take a look right now at that hand pass that was coming out. That is the reason why stoppage of play was called, Thomas Johnson being that man. There's number 99, Wayne Gretzky of the Oilers. Continuing a record-setting pace, although slowed a little by the Avenger checking here in this final series. Minute 13 left in the penalty against Lane. Rache wins the faceoff from Gretzky, and Morrow wears it around on the board. Linsman jammed in by Janssen. Now... Messier drops it to Coffey, a shot, Smith the save against his chest, and Morrow cleared it away for the Islanders. Charlie Huddy is back to get it for Edmonton. Huddy number 22, passing it to Lindsman. Lindsman leaving it there, Huddy shot, Smith another save, and 
Now they rule it was hit by a high stick. Play is called and the faceoff will be moved outside the New York blue line. You know, you look at the Edmonton power play, Gary. One for 14 in this game, in this series. They did score a goal tonight. As you look at Gord Lane in the penalty box. Their penalty or their power play statistics in the regular season, the best in the league at 29.3. They're down at 20.3 in the playoffs. So their power play, particularly in this series, has been one of their problems. Very frustrating for the players and for the coaches who can't do much about it during the course of the game, but watch. I know John Muckler Angler and say they're having a lot of discussions after that first game, but it didn't improve in the second. At least tonight, they have one power play goal. Meanwhile, the Islanders, the best penalty killing team in hockey, and that could be the reason. Here's Gretzky on right wing to center ice. Gretzky taken out of the play. Puck comes loose to Coffey. Coffey centered. Wide open in front of the net was Messier, and he fanned on his shot. And then the Islanders cleared away. Messier's had two good opportunities on this power play. That was a perfect one. He couldn't quite connect. There's Coffey leading the power play rush again. To Messier, but broken up and shot to center by the Islanders. Charlie Huddy has it there over to Messier. Messier flipping it in, and he flipped it too high. And over the glass it goes, and now just... Three seconds left in the penalty to that man, Gord Lane of New York. Once again, it appears as though we've got some discussions going on in the ice. Again, tempers a little high. Pearson and Coffee initially. Bourne involved in it. Lindsman. He also is having some words. The two linesmen right now just trying to talk them into playing hockey. Never mind all of this other curricular activities. Take a look here. That's where that. Messi had the chance and really fanned up. He really did. Had a good opportunity. Smith would not have been able to move that quickly in order to save it, Dan. Lucky for the Islanders that Messi did miss connect. There's Pearson for New York as Lane comes back on. Billy Carroll gets the puck into the Edmonton zone, but the play was offside. And hold on. Here they go. This has been threatening, and everybody congregates right in front of the Islander bench. Very dangerous place for them to congregate. Billy Carroll somewhere is in the middle of it all. He was the man that originally kind of started the pushing, but we have seen a great amount of this in this game, much more than we did the first two periods. First two games, I should say, and certainly more than we saw in the first period. We're live in Uniondale, New York. It's the Islanders one and Edmonton one. A 1-1 game, 10-26 left here in the second period. Face off at the Edmonton blue line as Dennis Potvac flips it in for New York. Randy Gregg is there to get it. Gregg shot at the center. Potvac knocking it down. Ahead to Trotje. Jackson checks in. Now Anders Keller firing it in. Bossy for New York on the boards. Trying to hold it in. Bossy still with the puck. Now gets help from Keller back to Mike Bossy. Bossy finally checked by Hunter and Jackson. Feeds it to center ice, and here comes Cote number 14 in front to Hunter. Shooting at Smith. Went down and made the save, and Croce comes up with the rebound. Close puck, Randy Gregg in, pinching from the point to hold it in. Now, Pot Fat trying to clear. It's going to be a penalty against Edmonton. A delayed penalty coming up as Lane feeds Trotje. Trotje dropping it to Potvac. Broken up and now as Pat Hughes gets the puck. Play is called and a penalty coming up against the Edmonton Oilers. And I believe against Hunter. Dave Hunter is the man that will go to the penalty box for the Oilers. Elbowing is going to be the call. He took a real run, though, at Dennis Potvin. That elbow obviously must have been high. Two minutes for elbowing is the call. Now we will see the New York Islanders on their opportunity on this power play. An elbowing penalty, 10-32 of the second period against Hunter. This game is up for grabs, Gary Green. 1-1, and now the Islanders get a chance on the power play, and they're at... 24.7%, but in the playoffs, 0 for 8, or in the series, 0 for 8. Well, there's the replay on that penalty. We see Hunter 
crashing into the boards. Actually, they have been putting a lot of pressure on Pop Man. Two men on top of him at all times. New York with the man advantage, dropping it to Janssen. Over to Stefan Kershaw. In on right wing to Bourne, back to Kershaw. Kershaw shot, blocked. Now Bourne a drive off the goal post. With Bourne shot. Here's Prince Sutter. Vogelin checks him off the puck. And Gretzky shoots it away for Edmonton. Billy Smith setting it up for Pearson. Stefan Pearson on right wing to Dwayne Sutter. Now to Janssen. Into the zone, broken up and cleared out by Fogelin. Gretzky racing down after Billy Smith out of the goal. Cleared it on the boards and Thomas Janssen spins away from a check. And makes a fine play to Pearson. Now to Brent Sutter. New York with the man advantage. Sutter shooting it in. Andy Moe back to the goal, clearing it to Lowe. Pearson at the point, held it in. Now Lowe can't clear it. Here's Brent Sutter, a shot. Moe to save, rebound. And Bossy shot it wide. Pearson at the point for New York. Giving it to Bossy, a shot. Hold the save, rebound, Bossy center, and it's deflected wide by Brent Sutter as the Islanders come very close. And now Edmonton cleared away. Bossy, that ship, Bourne, the other ship, both good scoring opportunities. Here's Trotte to Bossy, trying to center it, but the whole play was offside at the Edmonton blue line. 29 seconds left in the penalty to Hunter of Edmonton. I'm not so sure that Andy Moog perhaps wasn't hurt on one of those shots somewhat. Maybe it's just his stick that he is having some problems with, but Bourne on that power play opportunity had a great drive from close in. Bossy, Brent Sutter just steering one to the side of Andy Moog. The Islanders putting on some good pressure on their power play attempt. The Islanders in this final series, 0 for 8 on the power play. As you look at Mike Bossy, and both these teams have much better power plays than they've shown in the final series against each other. They really have had, Dan, you know, through the course of the year, the, the best opportunities, or I should say the best percentages, Edmonton especially, but it's got to be frustrating. We took a look at Al Arbor. I'm sure he's shaking his head as to the power play percentages as to why they are so poor. That's Lee Fogelin bringing a very important piece of equipment to goaltender Andy Moog, uh, goal stick as he gets ready to defend the rest of this shorthanded situation for the Oilers. 29 seconds left in the penalty to Hunter as now Fogelin gives some instructions to one of his teammates, Pat Hughes. Buck is in the center ice area. Here's Dennis Potvat at Clark Gilly. Gilly's trying to center. Now over to Trotchett. Back to Potvat. That shot. The flex wide, Pearson in from the point, drops it to Bossy. Back to Pearson. Shoots one, and that deflected just wide and went over the glass into the crowd. And now we have just four seconds left in Hunter's penalty as you look at Pat Hughes, one of the Edmonton penalty killers. Edmonton right now doing a good job of keeping that puck out of the net, but Andy Moog has had some problems in front. He's got big Clark Gillies. It was just now leaving the ice, but Clark Gillies was right in front of him trying to screen, as was Trotche. The Islanders plot, obviously, trying to get that puck back to the point, letting Potvin getting an opportunity to shoot whenever he could, being difficult for Andy Moog to see when Trotche and big Clark Gillies are standing right in front of you. Goring ready on this faceoff against Ray Cote. Goring gets the puck into the... Edmonton zone and Randy Gregg has it. Gregg shot at the center. Thomas Johnson now clearing one. Comes near the Edmonton line. The orders are back at full strength. Jackson shot at the center. Johnson has it there to Ken Morrow. Now to John Tonelli. To Thomas Johnson. He's upended at center ice. Shot in by Edmonton, but the play is offside. Pat Hughes on right wing in ahead of the pass at the Islander blue line. Well, if Pat Hughes had it just stayed about two strides back of that blue line, it could have meant a breakaway opportunity for him. But the Oilers did the most important thing, 
They killed off that penalty. The Islanders once again coming up cold on their power play attempt. They stop in the center ice area. Thomas Johnson for New York in this 1-1 game. Gets it to Goring at center and he shoots it in. All copy there to clear it. Taken now by Huddy ahead to Dave Blumley, number 20. Now to Tom Ralston. Ralston trying to break in. Moro tied him up. Ralston centered it. Johnson knocked it down. Now Coffey a shot. Smith a big save on Paul Coffey. And here comes Butch Goring for New York. Goring all over the place as he twists and turns. Now drops it to Moro. To Johnson, to Bob Neister, who flipped it in. Paul Coffey had a big chance moments ago. Clear as one. The puck going into the Washington or into the Islander zone for Gord Lane, who used to be with the Washington Capitals. Cleared at the center. Coffey dumps it back in, but that's called in an offside, and then Coffey and Nystrom collided after the whistle. I mentioned earlier, Dennis Potvin seems to be getting a lot of attention by the Oilers tonight, Dan. Every time they dump the puck in to his corner, there are two men in on top of him quickly. I think that's very obvious, the reason why they want to put a lot of pressure on him, try to avoid him handling that puck, and maybe just trying to wear him down somewhat. He's been very, very valuable for this Islander team in playoffs. Here's Lindsman working it to Messier. Shoots! And he shot it wide with a low drive. Now Fogelin from the point. Lane blocked that. And Dwayne Sutter feeds Brent Sutter. Into Bob Bourne. Broken up by Fogelin. Brent Sutter again. Into Bourne in the corner. A jam up there. And now Brent Sutter and Lindsman almost get into it. The Oilers work it to Willie Lindstrom. Ahead to Messier. Now to Lindsman. Lindsman stops on a dime, leaves it for Lindstrom. He's checked. Here's Kevin Lowe with a shot wide. Now Mark Messier, back to the goal. Pop back comes up with the puck. Cleared it. Fogelin held it in. Back to Messier. Mark Messier centered. Lindstrom shoots wide. And Dennis Potva for New York then clears it out of there. And Lowe goes back to get it. Kevin Lowe, a rich wide pass around on the boards to Mark Messier. Rache took it away from him. Rache to Gilly. He's checked by Lindstrom. Now to Messier. Messier flipping it in. This is Pot by back to get it around on the boards to Ken Morrow. Morrow shot at the center ice. Randy Gregg passing to Gretzky. Gretzky flipping it back into the Islander zone. Ken Morrow trying to clear it. Jackson knocks it down. His shot went off Anderson's stick. Now Gregg. Behind the goal to Gretzky, intercepting Potva. Stolen by Gretzky, he centered it, but then Morrow broke it up. And the Auditors are able to clear it. A 1-1 game. Gretzky for Edmonton. Passing to Curry, Harry Curry on right wing. Leaves it to Glenn Anderson, shot it high off the glass. And Potva for New York, beats Bossy. Bossy poke checked by Huddy, now centered it. Right back come the Oilers with Gretzky. Gretzky shoots one. Smith a stick save there. And he grabs the puck back of the net as Anderson went in to try and poke it loose. And then Morrow gave Anderson a poke or a push behind the net. Billy Smith really had to stretch it out in order to hold that puck behind the net area. He has to stay on his side of the goal crease or the goal line, I should say. Watch as Gretzky takes that shot. Smith reflects it easily off into the corners. But here's where he had to stretch. You notice Smith keeps his foot on in the crease area, but all he has to do is keep his foot actually this side, the center ice side of the goal line in order to avoid a penalty for delay of the game. Anders Keller scored in the first period for New York. Gary Curry has scored here in the second for Edmonton in a power play, and it's 1-1. As Ersan clears up the center to Trotte, now to Butch Goring. Goring trying to drop it back. Semenko intercepts that, and Dave Semenko, number 27, leads an Edmonton rush. Shot in, Smith clearing it aside. Charlie Huddy now behind the goal. Semenko can't get to it, and the editors work it to Bob Nystrom. He shot at the center ice. Hoppy works it to Lumley, who flips it into the editor zone. Pearson back to clear to Bob Nystrom. 
Nystrom number 23. Flips it in. Coffee going back. Coffee with a pass over to Ralston. Now to Pat Hughes. Hughes at center ice. Over to Huddy. Charlie Huddy moving in. Huddy trying to center one. Did. Now Hunter in behind the goal. Here's Hughes getting it in front. Now Tom Ralston a shot. Smith the save. And he cleared the rebound to Potback. He tried to shoot it out. Now Cote shoots one. And he blasted it wide. Huddy at the point. That shot wide of the target, and John Cinelli shoots at the center to put Goring. Goring with a low shot wide. Nystrom after the rebound, trying to tuck it in under Moog, and Moog made the save, and the Oilers clear it. Puck still in the zone, but Ray Cote comes up with it for Edmonton. His pass to Hunter, number 12. Dave Hunter cleared it behind the goal. Potvin moves it quickly out, and here's Brent Sutter. To John Pinelli to Bob Nystrom. Cleared away by Lowe. Now Morrow at center ice shooting one. Hunter gets it and clears it back in for Edmonton. Thomas Johnson with just over two minutes left in the second period and Nystrom. Intercepting is Lindsman at center to Lindstrom number 19. Willie Lindstrom trying to go around Morrow. Use that long reach in the poke check to break it up. Now Janssen for the Islanders, leaving a rush. Thomas Janssen trying to move in. Backhander, and he shot wide. Bob Nystrom for New York. Holding it in to Clark Gillies. Gillies and low fight for it back of the goal, and the puck is held there. And this game right now is up for grabs and on the verge of going either way. Both teams in a dog fight at this point. They really are, Dan. You know, one thing about the great defensive part of the Islanders is how well they play in their own end zone, but Thomas Johnson can also play well at the other end. Take a look as he was doing a great job here of handling the puck. Oilers desperately trying to get it away from him. He goes to his backhand, unfortunately for Johnson, a little wide, but back in the Islanders' end zone, they really clog up that middle ice area. They play extremely low. They force the Oilers when they get behind the Islanders and or net. Here's Dennis Potvaff from the point for the shot that's blocked, and back come Edmonton. Randy Gregg leads this rush. Gregg trying to drop it back, did to Yari Curry. Curry centers to Gretzky, but it's tipped away, and Bourne leads an Islander rush. Bourne able to clear it in, and Curry, number 17, has it for Edmonton, checked by Dwayne Sutter. He tried to center it to Brent Sutter, and Andy Moe grabbed the loose puck and held on, and we're down to a minute 14 left in the period. In our intermission, Al Albert's going to talk to a guy that played, oh, a few games in the league. Uh, maybe Just even a set a couple of records. You probably have never heard of him. What's his name, Gordy? <laughs> well, how's the last name? How? Oh, yeah. I knew it had come to me. What a treat Al Albert will have. Uh, I guess you have to call Gordy Howe Mr. Hockey. He really has a name that suits him well, Dan. Jackson for Edmonton. Checked by Trotte. Tried to center it. That's broken up and now cleared, and Glenn Anderson works at the center. Anderson, number nine. Pearson rides him out of the play. Jackson gets it behind the goal. Here's Glenn Anderson trying to center. We're in the final minute of the second period. Edmonton trying to put some pressure on. Now Jackson at the point end. Big Dennis Potvin blocked that. Now Jackson, another drive. Smith the save. Here's Jackson again. To Gretzky, now to Curry. Smith the save. And the Islanders clear it, and Billy Smith comes up big again. Back is... Greg to try and clear it out for Edmonton, and then as the Islanders carry in, the play goes offside. 33 seconds left here, and period number two as Wayne Gretzky heads for the Edmonton bench. Number 99 and his teammates really had some good opportunities in close on Smith. Trache being out there on that last shift against him. Billy Smith coming up big once again, but we noticed on that last shift the number of good chances close in, and that's where the Oilers are really dangerous, close in around the net. They're quick, they can pass well, and they oftentimes will make that extra move in order to get into a better shooting position. Here's Hughes trying to drop one into his own zone and went all the way back to Bold. Pogola now to Kevin Lowe. Ahead to number 12, Dave Hunter. 
Now to number 14, Cote. Cote trying to center. Pierce can't use. Hughes gets it in front of the net. Tied up by Janssen and Goring comes back for New York. Ten seconds left in the period. Goring to Nystra. And Kevin Lowe broke it up and cleared it for the orders. Morrow to Janssen. We're down to two seconds left as Janssen shoots it in. And there is the buzzer to end the second period of game three of the 1983 Stanley Cup final. The Islanders scored in the first Shots period. Edmonton scored in that second period. 14. Islanders five. Coming up our interview with Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. The shots on goal in that period favored Edmonton 14 to 5 in the game, 25 to 15 in favor of Edmonton, but it is a 1 1 game. After two periods, that is the score. Stay tuned for Al Albert's interview with Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. Two periods of the Nassau Coliseum. It's the Islanders one and Edmonton one. Harry Curry early in the second period tying this game up at the end of two. Against the uh, Edmonton Oilers in the great one, Wayne Gretzky, the Islanders looking to make it three in a row on their way to four straight Stanley Cups. And uh, Wayne Gretzky, not the only great one in National League history. Uh, another one sitting with me right now. Mr. Hockey is called. We'll, we'll take the great one. Gordy Howe, I thank you for joining us in between periods. I know you are enjoying this series, taking this one in, also representing uh, Emory Worldwide, and you have a presentation tomorrow. Right. We're going to uh, Mr. Curry, as a matter of fact, uh, a young, or uh, Charlie Huddy, I should say, a young man uh, out in Edmonton was a plus-minus winner this year. We're very proud of the fact. Uh, you know, it's so often sometimes a player that's uh, really truly hasn't got a home all of a sudden somebody can not believe in him and put him in a lineup and he comes up a winner and it's uh, it's just the makeup of what makes a hockey player. Give the guy a break and boy they'll play their hearts out what you're seeing here tonight. Charlie Huddy with a plus 62. It's a plus minus award and uh, he will get that trophy the tomorrow. Other, the other kid he had didn't have such a heavy number on his back. <laughs> he might have been. <laughs> but Gretzky is right behind him with the, uh, with the 60. I know Gretzky helped himself out, I think, more than the Charlie. Right. Well, the, the kid's phenomenal, you know, and it's, uh, he made a couple of rushes tonight, and uh, I know there's a young man going to be with the Lanny McDonald who had a fantastic year, and uh, he can attest to the greatness of the kid because they ran up, unfortunately, ran up against him in the playoffs. He can do everything in the game of hockey. But he has no goals against the Islanders, Wayne Gretzky, in these three games, and tonight had several very good opportunities. When does uh, the frustration of being stopped time and again get to you? Well, if you're strictly a goal scorer, yes, it'll get to you immediately because that's your main support of a living, I guess. But uh, it, when you're a playmaker such as he, and I think uh, knowing the kid since he was 12, I do believe that he gets just as much a thrill of setting somebody up because they, uh, not only does the, uh, the team you know, are rewarded by the goal, and goals are what win games. But what happens is the first guy to get thanked is the fellow <laughs> sets the individual up, and he kind of likes that. And I, and I know I see him. You can tell that when uh, he gets a little fidgety uh, out there. He's the gloves, the elbow pads, the skates, and then back to the helmet. And uh, you can tell when the, a little bit of pressure is on. It's not really true pressure, I don't believe, with the uh, Wayne Gretzky. What I do believe is the the frustration of not being able to do more for his uh, teammates. And gosh, only knows how much he's done over the few years, and for hockey itself. Uh, if I had his record right now and never scored another goal for two years, I'd still be ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts after the first two games? Well, the first two games were, uh, they're surprising. Naturally, uh, I never got out west. Uh, I understand uh, Edmonton were just flying, and then uh, the Islanders went in and dictate the, uh, the play of the game, but I also believe that the the fans in Edmonton, to their excitement and uh, almost putting their team up in a pedestal, made them a very nervous bunch of young men. And uh, they they fought the nerves. They played a very good game the first game. And uh, I thought, with any luck at all, as as tonight, they've hit a couple of goal posts. They could be leading this uh, game, too. But the second game, uh, the Islanders just played a superb hockey game. They could have played the Russians and beat them that night. Who do you like in this series? Uh, well, uh, you can't overlook the Islanders. Uh, they definitely got home ice advantage, and uh, they're veterans, so I don't think the home is bothering them that much. If Edmonton's going to sneak out with a the game, they better do it tonight because uh, if they lose tonight, 
uh, you know, the, uh, this is a veteran team, and uh, if they get by the throat, they kill. Uh, they go out there, and they get one goal up, and pretty soon you blink an eye, which I can do very <laughs> easily, and all of a sudden they're up three. So you, uh, I'd say if Edmonton's going to do it and prolong the series to uh, six or seven games, they better win tonight. Well, Gordy Howe, in, in your great career, you have uh, delivered many messages on the ice. Uh, Perhaps in the corner, you might say to somebody, please don't do that again. That's the way you did it. What, what's your reaction when you see what has uh, gone on, the couple of incidents with Billy Smith? Well, Billy Smith is a, I think he studied Harry Lumley's <laughs> films because Harry Lumley was very similar in the gold time. That's his territory. You stay out of that, and I'll stay here, and you stay out there. And that's basically what Harry Lumley did in practice was identical. But with Harry Lumley in those days, they never wore masks. So uh, he showed a lot of guts by doing that because all of a sudden somebody come in, fire the puck high, and the way they're shooting the puck nowadays, uh, you have to be a little careful. But he's game. He's in there, and uh, never mind the stick swing and what he has displayed tonight as a goaltender talent has been just fantastic. And and sometimes a goaltender be a little lucky where they're re you know deflecting off a pad, maybe off the last roll in the pad, maybe off the toe of the skate. But what he's doing, he's got everything square. He's got square in the middle of the pad, and he's got a good glove on at the backhand. He's completely stopping the puck. Hardly anything's getting by him. I just had one thought watching on, and Mike Bossy ties your goal mark for the playoffs. Dennis Potvan passes your assist mark. I figured the only thing you could do Did was come. <laughs> no, I figured you could come out of retirement and get him. No <laughs> way. I, I'm ex uh, extremely proud. Uh, it's, uh, you know, with now, uh, with the game being built around scoring, it's really nice to see because uh, actually the uh, the seats I'm sitting in are very expensive seats, and <laughs> I'm fully entertained, and what makes it is the, the near misses and the good plays and the goals, so that's uh, more power to those kids. Uh, you know, I appreciate Potvin. I definitely appreciate Young Bossy. Well, the ambassador for Emory Worldwide will make the uh, Emory Edge presentation tomorrow at the Stanley Cup luncheon. Gordy Howe, the original grade one, thanks for joining us in between periods. Thank you. As everybody said, I'm half as good. There's a 99 <laughs> out there now. For Gordy Howe being our guest, USA would like you to have this exciting new Kodak disc camera, the disc camera that's so easy to use, you never miss a picture. Coming up next, the winner of the 1983 Masterton Trophy. He'll join us in the studio after these words. After two periods of play at the Nassau Coliseum, it's the New York Islanders won, the Edmonton Oilers won. The only scoring play in the second period, a power play goal by Gary Curry is seventh of the playoffs at 105. Second period was dominated by the Oilers. They outshot the Auditors 14 to 5. And here's the only goal. Well, right off the faceoff, Gretzky got the shot, but Billy Smith, as we said before, gave that rebound in a dangerous spot right out to the slot area. Gary Curry being the man, Johnny on the spot, put that puck then right in behind Billy Smith. Meanwhile, Billy Smith is the man of the hour again for the New York Auditors in that second period. The Oilers could have really taken the lead in this game. They really could, Dan, if it hadn't have been once again for Billy Smith. He, I hate to use the word awesome. He was almost breathtaking in that period again. He has really played well throughout the course. He wants to win, Dan. Let's face it. He wants to win four straight. Nothing less for Billy Smith. Meanwhile, as Gordy Howe was talking about, he looks so confident in that goal crease. And he's not just getting a piece of shots. He's getting them dead on. And it's amazing as well how he can keep his eye on that puck at all times. To me, at, there seems to be sometimes where there's three and four players in the sight line of that puck, but yet he still is able to somehow get his eye on it and come up with big saves. You know, he, he can play all different positions. He gets down in a crouch. He's down on his back, but he still stops the puck no matter how you look at it. And the Oilers have played a much better game here tonight in game three than they did in game two when they were bounced six to three in Edmonton. But it is anybody's game, a 1-1 game, as we move into period number three. Anders Keller scored in the first period. Andy Moulds is in goal for Edmonton. And then Yerry Curry scored in the second. The shots on goal in the game so far favor Edmonton 25 to 15. Andy Moog really, Dan, has played pretty well tonight. He has only been tested for 15 shots. 
but he had still come up much bigger than he did in the second game where he wasn't too happy with himself and I don't think anyone was too happy with the way that Andy Moog a couple of soft goals perhaps in game number two but he is back on his game tonight and again playing well game four of this series will be Tuesday night you'll see it on USA at 8 o'clock Eastern time here we go with period three of game three and Wayne Gretzky and the Oilers in this 1-1 game jumping in Cleared on the board. Trotche trying to shoot it out of there. Buck back of the goal. Anderson and Trotche fight for it. Here's Gretzky with a chance. And he shot it wide. Mark Gillies now for New York. Clearing it into the center ice area to pot fan out of Mike Bossy. His shot blocked. And Gretzky gets it for Edmondson. Pierre Curry now to Anderson. Anderson poke checked in the play by Pearson. And Trotche back to get it. And now Pearson has been injured. He looks at the referee, he wanted a penalty call, none was. And the Oilers try and jam up and hold the puck in. Gretzky with a shot. And now it's taken by Dennis Potva. Bossy ahead to Clark Gillies. Gillies dropping it back, and Harry Curry takes over and flips it in for Edmonton. Johnson shooting it right back up. This is Brent Sutter. Well saved by Moog on that high shot. And he held on to it. And the faceoff will be in the Edmonton zone. Well, let's take a look at some action down in the Islanders' end zone. Anderson and Pearson doing a little pushing, but look at the way that Anderson's stick came up and got it right in Stephen Pearson's face. Stephen Pearson ends up with Glenn Anderson's stick, in fact, but I think that one hurt. Pearson was looking for Brian Lewis for a penalty call, but none was. Faceoff coming up in the Edmonton zone. Ray Cote against Butch Goring on this faceoff. Linesman Ron Finn getting both players set. Puck is dropped. Goring gets it back to Janssen. He gets it into the corner and Greg shoots it around to the board. John Tonelli stealing it. Centered it. Nystrom held it in. Now Randy Gregg clears it and the orders work it to Pat Hughes. Now to Hunter number 12. Into Cote, a shot, sets the save. Antonelli clears the rebound. Buck in behind the goal. Morrow jamming in there with Hunter. Now it's centered, cleared away by Smith. Goring trying to shoot it out. Greg held it in for Edmonton. The Oilers trying to put some pressure on. Drop it to Randy Gregg, a drive. Blocked at the defense. Loose puck and Nystrom has it for New York. And now... The play is called because of a hand pass from one Islander to another. And the faceoff will be in the New York zone. Well, as we take a look at a fine young defenseman for the New York Islanders, Thomas Johnson, he has played extremely well this season. Al Arbor very happy with the way that he has progressed. He has, at some point in time, in this Stanley Cup playoffs, he has been the Islanders' most valuable defenseman for certain games. But then again, he's got Dennis Potvin that is taking most of the pressure off as far as the most valuable defenseman for the Islanders. Here's Messier winning a faceoff to copy that shot. Smith got a piece of it. Pearson now clears and Dwayne Sutter pokes it to center. Copy back to get it, works it to Lindsman. To Messier. Now back to Lindsman. He's bumped by Longevin and knocked down and big Dave Longevin. Shot at the center ice. Here's Brent Sutter. Now to Bob Bourne. Bourne cutting in. Cuts right behind the net and then lost control of it. And Messier speeds back for Edmonton. Over onto the end of Lindstrom. Got it behind the net. Pearson for New York. Where's to Dwayne Sutter. And center ice to Brent Sutter who circles back. Brent Sutter, the younger of the two Sutters, a long shot, mold to save, and Wayne Gretzky has it. Pierre Curry. Curry clearing it to Messier, back to Gretzky, and intercepting that is Dennis Potva. Ahead to Brian Trotche. Vogelin rubs Trotche out of the play on the board. The editors get it back to Potva. Potva drive, mold to save, rebound. Cleared by Moog into the corner. Here are the auditors, Bossy, to Caller out in front. Now Trotche loses his stick, and Bossy dropped it to Potvin. 
Buck at center ice. Mike Bossy carrying back here. The Trotche back to Bossy. He missed it. Gord Lane at the point for the shot. That deflected wide. Center to Caller. It was open but fanned on it. And back come Edmonton. Trotche breaks it up at center ice. And here's Nystra. He's knocked down at the blue line. The Oilers coming up with it. And Lee Fogelin has it for Edmonton. Now Lowe went to clear it. Nystrom held it in. Here's Nystrom into Forchuk. Buck held on the boards now. And Lowe clears it to Hunter at center. Hunter circling back. Has to flip it back into the corner. Fogelin shot it off the boards. And away comes Kote on left wing to Hunter. Hunter cutting in. And Billy Smith cleared that away. Bob Nystrom lost it. Kote for Edmonton. In behind the goal, but a good play by Janssen to break it up for New York. And now to Ken Morrow, to John Canelli. Into the Edmonton zone, but broken up by Hunter. Here's Cote to Pat Hughes, number 16. Hughes trying to go wide, backhander, and Smith makes the save, and Janssen clears it to center. Racing after it is Brent Sutter, trying to go around Jackson, and Don Jackson took Sutter out of the play. This game going at a furious clip at this point. Hughes takes a hard hit from Longevin, but cleared it to Hunter. And now play is on into the Islander zone. The fans thought that a penalty was being called, but none was. Back comes Dwayne Sutter. He centered it. Cleared away by the Oilers. Now Bourne center. Pearson at the point. Shooting. They score! Bob Bourne! Bobby Bourne standing right on the side of the net as Stefan Pearson winds up with that shot. Moog made the save, but the puck bounced over right to the crease area where Bobby Bourne was standing there. He was all alone, except with Dave Langevin standing there as well, almost able to set up a screen for Bourne so that no oiler could actually get at him. And did you notice how careful Bourne was not to go in that goal crease? He really was, Dan, and that was a very smart move because it avoided perhaps the goal being called back. Islanders coming up once again in a clutch situation with a very important goal. And they love it at the Nassau Coliseum. Listen to them as the Islanders take the lead at 2-1. Here we go as we move back to the live action of this third period. Buck is into the Edmonton zone. Charlie Huddy back to get it. Trying to clear one. Buck comes down for Gord Lane. And now back to the play. Dave Lumley has been injured. And he gets up slowly and play is go. Coast to coast coverage of the National Hockey League. Hold on. As Huddy almost gets into it with some of the... Fresh and clean as a whistle, that's Irish Spring. Fresh and <laughs> clean as a whistle. Irish Spring's green and white stripes have two truly effective deodorants, two deodorants. And a fine, fresh scent. So you're fresh and clean as a whistle. Irish Spring deodorant soap gets you fresh and clean as a whistle. Well, we almost got something going there as Lumley was Injured on the play, and then sticks got very high as everybody came back into the Edmonton end of the rink. Clark Gillies came charging down from the neutral ice area. It looked like we were going to have a real Donnybrook, but the linesmen reacting quickly were able to separate it before it got started. The scoring play for New York, Bourne, his eighth goal to the playoffs. Pearson and Longev in the assists. And it gives the auditors a two to one lead. 5 11 of the third period, the time. No penalties on that last play as the puck is flipped in by Edmonton. There's a chance for the Oilers back to Charlie Huddy at the point. In behind the goal to Tom Ralston. He centered one, and Nystrom breaks it up. 
Nystrom for New York. Moving in, and Wayne Merrick apparently in just slightly ahead of the play. There is Merrick, number 11, and that play call back because of an offside. Merrick right now on that last shift, he was centering Bobby Nystrom and Clark Gillies, two big, strong, tough, aggressive wingers that looked on that last minute as though they were out to destroy. Glenn Sather right now, he's having, well, a problem, I think, getting his hockey club ahead in any game in this series. Here's Anders Keller shooting it in behind the Edmonton goal. Low is there. Third and Gretzky breaks loose to Anderson, number nine. Anderson crossing center and shooting it in for Gary Curry. Now Anderson shoots one right through the goal, Grace, and that deflected just wide. Here comes Troche for New York. To Anders Keller. Keller to Troche. And across the line to Ken Morrow. He scores! Kenny Morrow! Well, this is a shot very similar to Dave Semenko's goal in game two. Caught the goaltender off guard. In this case, it was Andy Moog. Good wrist shot by Morrow. Flick, just flicks it from the slot area, but it catches the open area. From that particular angle, Andy Moog thought that he had the short side covered, but it wasn't covered. And in fact, had enough room for it for Kenny Morrow to find an open space to put the Islanders ahead three to one. Ken Morrow's fourth goal of the playoffs. Trotze gets an assist, as does Anders Keller. 6.21 of the third period the time, and a 3-1 Islander lead. And these Oilers are in trouble here. They're down two games to nothing and down in game three by a two-goal margin. The Oilers punch up and try and forecheck, but Longevin fell on top of the puck. With the score, New York 3, Edmondson 1. We'll pause right here. In the last known photograph of the Dalton gang, Bob and Grant Dalton are both wearing Levi's original blue jeans. They probably never gave their choice a lot of thought, and a hundred years later, Levi's jeans still give you a lot not to think about. Workmanship that'll never let you down. Comfort you know you can count on. And style that fits in without question. Levi's jeans. Levi's. The more you think about them, the more you realize you don't have to. The, the New York Islanders three, the Edmonton Oilers one. 13 minutes, 22 seconds left here in the third period. That goal by Ken Morrow is fourth of the playoffs, is second of this final series. And what a big one that is. Here is a loose puck at center ice as Randy Gregg chases back after it. Over on left wing to Jackson. He shoots it to the Islander line. Dave Longevin trying to clear it to Pearson. And the Islanders clear it to center. Bob Nystrom after it. Now picked up by Goring. Here comes Goring trying to break in. He shot it wide as he was upended. And then he looked back and thought a penalty should have been called. Now Nystrom steals it. His shot is high off the glass. Hunter for Edmonton to Cote. A two-on-two -two Edmonton break. Cote trying to flip it through, and Stefan Pearson gets it for New York. To John Tonelli. Dave Longevin works it to Tonelli, now to Nystrom. And Bob Nystrom fires it into the Edmonton zone. Back to get it for the Oilers is Linsman to Messier, back to Linsman. Kenny Linsman speeding into the Islanders zone. Passing it over, Messier, a shot. Smith, another big save. And it's cleared away by New York. Huddy back to touch it, icing the call. Billy Smith has a 1.50 goals against average in this final, and you see why. And for our local affiliates, we pause here. Another great tennis event hits the USA screen tomorrow night from Dusseldorf, West Germany. It's the very competitive World Team Cup. And the American entry is as powerful as ever. Semi-final action will commence at 6.30 p.m. Eastern 
3.30 Pacific. Then the finals comes your way Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. The best tennis found anywhere is found right here on the USA Network. With Al Albert and Gary Green, this is Dan Kelly. Third period action of game three of the 83 Stanley Cup final and the Islanders win a face off and clear it to center. Wayne Sutter flips it into the Edmonton zone. Charlie Huddy back to get it. Coffee behind the goal to Huddy. Huddy on the right wing boards to Lindstrom. He shot at the center. That's knocked down by Potba. Now a loose puck near the Edmonton line taken by Bourne. Here's Bob Bourne with a shot. Bold to save. Now centering pass to Sutter from Lane is knocked away. Bourne holding it in to Dwayne Sutter. He tried to center and Messier comes back for Edmonton. Messier leaving it for Willie Lindstrom. Lindstrom upended and New York will get a penalty here. And as they get possession now play is called. And Edmonton will have a power play chance out of this. We're live in Uniondale, New York, where the Islanders lead the Edmonton Oilers 3 to 1. Introducing the new front wheel drive Toyota Camry. It does not have a fireplace, but it does have living room, elbow room, headroom, toe room, family room. For families who are a size above average, for families who like to spread out. There's lots of feet for your feet, lots of living room for anyone, and a tough new engine with quick pickup and great mileage. The new Toyota Camry, not just the family car, the family Camry. Oh, 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 what a feeling, Camry! Toyota. There's Bob Bourne and the penalty box for New York. Tripping the call, 8.34 or 8.39 the time, I should say. And here's the penalty. Well, Bourne here stretching it out, ends up tripping Lindstrom. And that is exactly why the Oilers right now will have a chance to perhaps get within one goal of striking the Islanders. Down three to one. Edmonton with a power play chance. Bourne, meanwhile, scored a big goal to give them the lead. And then Morrill gave them a two-goal lead. Bourne has been their leading scorer in these playoffs with 27 points. There's Butch Goring breaking up a play at center ice. Buck shot in. Knocked down by Glenn Anderson. Anderson getting it in across the line. Broken up and Goring picks an opening and clears it down the ice. This is Paul Coffey. Coffey trying to work it through. Ken Moore was there defensively. And what a standout he's been. Gimpy knee and all for the Islanders. He really has, Danny. So important in the defensive defenseman role. There's Coffey. He's poke checked by Morrow. Now Anderson tied up. Coffey in the corner. Back to Curry at the point. Curry checked in the play, and Trotje breaks out for New York. Hit across the line. He's checked, and Anderson gets it for Edmonton. Wayne Anderson ahead to Gretzky. Back to Anderson. Ken Morrow is there again defensively for New York. This time Curry checked him. Here's Fogelin over to Lowe, centers to Curry. In front, Gretzky shot it just wide. Now Gretzky again trying to center. Billy Carroll intercepting that. And then Carroll fires it down the ice. And the Islander, Islander penalty killing is a very big factor here. It really is. You know, on that last opportunity by the Oilers, Glenn Anderson had lost his stick. That almost means a four-on-four -four situation. Here is Lowe for the Oilers, firing it in. Ten seconds left in Bourne's penalty. Held in by Fogler. Now a centering pass. Gretzky just missed tipping it in. Low behind the goal to Hughes. Jack Hughes flipping it in to Hunter in the corner. He's knocked down. The editor is Bourne out of the penalty box, able to clear it. It went off an Edmonton player, so there'll be no icing. And back is Fogler. Just over nine minutes left in regulation time as the Islanders punt back. Works it to Bob Nystrom. He skated off and low gets it for Edmonton. To Pat Hughes, clearing it to Tonelli. He centered one. Now Nystrom stole it. He shot wide and low gets it for Edmonton. 
Low with a pass that's behind Hunter and goes the length of the ice. Morrow is there to touch it, and we get an icing call on the play. For our local affiliates, we'll pause here. You're watching Stanley Cup Hockey on the USA Cable Network. And now in the late stages of the third period, we start to think about the Stanley Cup star. Will it be the Islanders Bob Bourne, who put the Islanders in front, Bourne the leading scorer for the Islanders in the playoffs, or Kenny Morrow, who added the insurance goal and has been a key factor for the Islanders in the playoffs. Or perhaps Billy Smith, once again, spectacular. He faced 25 shots in the first two thirds. Reminder, game four right here on USA, Tuesday night, starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. There you see the time remaining in regulation time. Eight minutes, 37 seconds, a 3-1 Islander lead. If it ends this way, the Islanders would have a 3-0 stranglehold on the Stanley Cup final series. Here's Willie Lindstrom to Mark Messier. Messier into the corner with Morrow. Now to Willie Lindstrom. He can't center it. And Wayne Sutter has the puck for New York. Sutter holding it against the boards. And we'll have a stoppage in play. And a face-off in the New York zone as you look at Dwayne Sutter of the Islanders. He is one reason amongst 19 others as to why this Islander hockey club are so great in the third period when they have leads. They just seldom get beat. In fact, coming into the night hockey game, whenever they had the lead going into the third period, that is, they have not been defeated yet this year in 11 opportunities. Here's Morrow, who's had a goal and an assist for the Islanders tonight. Third on the boards. A jam up there, and it's held. Anders Keller, Bob Bourne, and Ken Morrow have scored the goals. Morrow has a goal and an assist to lead them offensively. The only Edmonton goal by Yerry Curry in the second period on a power play as you look at some of the box or private boxes at the Nassau Coliseum. Meanwhile, you go back to some of the saves Billy Smith made in that second period. This could be a very different game. It could be a big difference, especially for these Oilers. It could be a difference in the series if it hadn't been for Billy Smith. Goaltending is the key to Stanley Cup playoffs. Faceoff coming up in the Islander end of the ring. Smith has a 1.50 goals against average. Coming into this period of game three in this series, that's the kind of goal he's given Al Arbor and his Islanders. Now Sutter and Longevin trying to hold it there. The Oilers center it. Comes to Jackson at the point. Don Jackson with a shot, and Pearson blocks that. Brent Sutter, a clearing pass. Wayne Sutter racing after it with Randy Gregg. Gregg takes Sutter out of the play, and Jackson is able to get the puck. The Oilers trailing by two. And in danger of being down three to nothing in the series. Here's a pass to Tom Ralston. He's checked. And now the auditors come up with it. And shoot at the center ice. Charlie Huddy has it there. Knocked away. Third back in. And Anders Keller races in for New York. Keller taken out of the play. Continues to battle. Gets it to Trotje. Trotje checked. But here's Mike Bossy. Bossy back to Potvac. To the side of the net to Trotje. He gets it in front, but Huddy has Keller tied up. Now the loose puck taken by Tom Ralston. Clearing it to the line, held in by New York. Keller and Coffey jam up and hold it, and now we have a stoppage in play. Game four of the Stanley Cup Finals between the Oilers and the Islanders will come your way Tuesday night. We'll be on the air from right here at the Nassau Coliseum beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 Pacific. Be sure to be with us all through the finals here on USA. Tuesday night, game four, the Islanders and Oilers starting at 8 p.m. Six minutes, 51 seconds left in the third period. The Islanders three and Edmonton one. I would expect you would see Gretzky's line who are on there right now, Dan. They will be on every second shift, I would think, seeing how their team is down two goals. Gary, are the Islanders doing anything specifically to Gretzky in this game or this series? No, not necessarily, Dan. They're watching him closely, but I think they're taking away the back of the net that he plays so well, and they're taking away the close-in opportunities in front of the net. 
He's been held scoreless. He's had three assists in the series, but has not had a goal. Here's Fogelitz trying to clear it out. Comes to center, and Gretzky has it for Edmonton and dumps it in. Going back, Janssen trying to clear it. Now Gretzky gets it into the corner. Janssen is there to shoot it on the boards. Here's Lowe flipping it back to the net. Gretzky and Janssen are there, and Janssen's on him in a hurry, which is the point Gary was making earlier. Lowe at the point, a shot. Smith the save, and Gretzky was well tied up in front of the net by Janssen, and Smith was able to freeze the puck. Smith is so observant as well, Dan. You know, I think in that situation, he might have put that puck off in the corner to keep it going, but instead, he knew who was out there on the ice. Number 99 was close by. He wasn't going to give that guy an opportunity to perhaps get his first goal in this series against the New York Islanders. Gretzky has an assist on the first goal of the game, now has 37 in the playoffs, which is an all-time record, but in the three games has been held scoreless. Billy Smith coming into the third period of game three with a 1.50 goals against average in this series. And mister, you can write down 1.50 and that tells you a lot about this series. It sure does, Dan, and especially against the Edmonton Oilers of all teams. The highest scoring team ever in the history of hockey and they did it this year. Here's Thomas Johnson. Flipping it in, Yerry Curry is there for Edmonton. Passing it to Lowe. Lowe got the center, checked by Anders Keller. And now Kenny Morrow for New York with the puck. Played it off the boards into the Edmonton zone. Lowe is back to pick it up for Edmonton. Lowe on right wing to Curry. Here's Thomas Johnson breaking up another rush. And now leading one. Tabasi off his skate. Fogelin tries for Edmonton. To Gretzky. Gretzky trying to go around Brent Sutter. He drops it to Yeri Curry. Now to Messier. That shot went wide as Messier fired. Now another shot by Jackson and Thomas Johnson held it against his chest with his arm. And that little guy has played some big hockey for the Auditors. He really has, Dan. He has also been under a lot of pressure in the corner areas. Al Arbor, I think, has got to be pretty proud of the way that his defense have really withheld a lot of forechecking by the Oilers because in game one and this game as well, Oilers have really dominated as far as play, time of play in the Islanders' end zone, but the score dictates something else different. There's Longevin for New York trying to clear one down the ice, does, and it's going to be an icing call against the Islanders and another faceoff down in the New York zone now with 5.03 to play as you look at Don Jackson, the Minnesota defenseman, who looks like he's found a home as a regular in the NHL. Well, as someone said today, no one really wanted Don Jackson, but I'll tell you, the Edmonton Oilers sure want him, and they want him for the future because he has played well as a sixth defenseman. Put him in his right spot. He has played well for the Oilers. From the faceoff, Longevin coming up with the puck for New York as Brent Sutter won the draw, and Dave Longevin picks an opening and fires it down the ice again, only this time Brent Sutter races in after it, so there's no icing. Sutter was onside in the play. Greg now pins him it against the boards. And the Islanders will force a face-off in the Edmonton end of the ring. You know, Dan, you talk about a guy like Don Jackson and Randy Gregg in the same light. They don't get a, a great amount of attention. Defensive defensemen that go out there and they kill a lot of penalties are used in defensive situations. They don't pinch a great deal. They kind of tend to back up and play it very cautiously. But those type of defensemen are important to round out your hockey club. They're not like the Huddies and the Paul Coffees, but they are important to your hockey club. And this guy here, he is the most important ingredient to your hockey club. They're gonna start calling him Mr. Man. <laughs> or Mr. Hockey. Mr. Goldton. <laughs> Billy Smith has been superb. Here is Dennis Potvap from the point for the shot wide. And Hunter breaks out on left wing. Ahead to Hughes. That's knocked away. Potva now shooting at the center. And here's Tonelli, number 27. Trying to go around Charlie Huddy. He did. Nice trim a shot. Moog the save. And then Tonelli a shot. And Moog stopped that. And held on to it. And there you see the hustle of Nystrom and Tonelli. And it almost paid off for New York with a goal. 
They aren't pretty to watch, Dan, but they sure are entertaining in the way that they give it so much effort out there. It is unbelievable. They're like bull terriers. They've got incredible endurance. Nice jump, Tanelli there. Gave Andy Moak some real problems. The Islanders three, Edmonton one, as the puck is now cleared down into the New York zone. Dennis Potva back to get it, and an icing call against the Edmonton club. We're down to four minutes, 17 seconds. Left in the third period, a three to one Islander lead. I think Gordy Howe summed it up very well, Dan, about number 99, Wayne Gretzky. I think he's been somewhat probably disappointed himself because he hasn't helped his teammates more, but he is a very talented hockey player. One of the greatest things that has happened to this game. A class gentleman on and off the ice. Gretzky, got a great many years yet to play in this game. And I think he'll be the first to tell you that Goring, Janelli, and Nystrom have played a big part in his being held scoreless. He's that kind of a guy. Buck into the corner. Here he is. Put Goring. Shoots, and he shot it high. Off the glass. Thomas Johnson behind the net to Goring. He can't center it, and Charlie Huddy worked it on the boards, and Wayne Gretzky comes up with the puck. Flipping it to Huddy. Charlie Huddy cleared it into the New York zone. There's Coffey trying to center it. He did. Now Gretzky able to poke it into the corner, but the auditor shoot it right back up. And Huddy has to go back near his own blue line. And Nystrom's on top of him. Pass to Coffey. There's Thomas Janssen. Trying to flip it in. John Tonelli gets it for New York. Tonelli, number 27. That shot is high and over the glass into the crowd. Interesting when you're trying to defend the lead as the Islanders are. The three players. Al Arbor head out in that shift. Nystrom, Tanelli, and Trotje. Three great defensive-minded hockey players who don't just lay back in the neutralized area. They put pressure on the opposition by doing it smartly, keeping one man back. Al Arbor doesn't want his hockey club to lay back. He wants them to put pressure on, but make sure defensively they don't get caught on two-on-one, breakaways, or three-on-two. Here are the Islanders with Wayne Sutter centering one. Bob Bourne over to get it. Four for New York in front of backhander by the car. And it's four to one for the Islanders. Wayne Sutter, I believe it was, that was then ended up putting that puck in the net. Very difficult at times. Brent 21, Wayne 12. Those numbers can get changed around, but let's watch closely. Brent in front of that net getting the shot off originally, but then it was Dwayne that kept pounding, I believe, in order to put it behind. Let's make sure by looking at it from another angle. Brent takes the shot, but is it held by Moog? No, it wasn't. It was loose, and Dwayne Sutter gave it that extra little pounce and push with the stick, and that push with the stick did some good as it went behind Andy Moog to put the Islanders in a very clinching 4-1 to one lead. And on the verge of going ahead, three to nothing in the series. Wayne Sutter gets the goal. And the Auditors have a four to one lead. Bob Bourne gets an assist. So does Brent Sutter. 16 43 of the third period of the time. That's Clark Gillies of the Auditors you see on your screen. And there's the Auditor bench in there. Patient and. Very brilliant coach Al Arbor. His club with a four to one lead and uh, about to take a three to nothing stranglehold lead on this series. I think it would take a miracle on ice right now for the uh, Oilers to come back and win this hockey game. Here's Wayne Merrick trying to shoot it in. Broken up, Lumley. Knocks it down and now back comes Merrick. Merrick in across the line, broken up. Clark Gillies gets it. He's checked and Tommy Ralston. Works it ahead on right wing to Dave Lumley. Over to Semenko, now to Ralston. Ralston checked in the play. And Wayne Merrick fires it in for New York. We're down to two and a half minutes to play. Gary Green, if I had told you that Edmonton would score only four goals in the first three games of this series, you would have had me committed somewhere. <laughs> I certainly would have, Dan. I wouldn't have believed it. You wouldn't have. I just don't think anybody expected this Islander Hockey Club to be ahead 3-0 after three games, and that's the way it looks as though it's going to be. And to hold the highest scoring team in the history of hockey, 
to just four goals in three games. That's what it's been so far. Here's Hughes on right wing. Moving in. He spun around. Centered it. Smith is there to grab it and hold on to it. And Billy Smith causes a stoppage in play. And how brilliant the 32-year-old native of Perth, Ontario, has been again tonight. He really has, Dan. Watch here is born at the opposite end. Puts some pressure on Moog, but throws that puck out into the front area. Brent Sutter taking the shot. Dwayne Sutter scoring the goal. The Islanders with a four to one lead and this crowd revved up behind them. A minute 54 to play. Of course, we can tell you that only once in the history of the Stanley Cup has a team ever been behind. Three games to nothing in a final and come back to win the Cup. And that was the way back in the 1940s. So that's seemingly the task the Edmonton Oilers will face. As the auditors go after Stanley Cup number four. Here's the centering pass and Smith held it against the side of his goal. And we'll have another face off in the New York zone with now a minute 36 to play. Billy Smith playing Stanley Cup playoff game number 101 and having some fun. How many times, Dan, during the course of the regular season have we talked about goaltending and said that it's important in every game, but once you come to playoffs, goaltenders, hot goaltenders, can oftentimes win you series. Well, I think Billy Smith in this series, if they end up winning it, will be the reason why. They stop in the Islander zone. Cote clearing it in behind the goal. Hunter in to try and get it. Now copy. And now the sticks go up on the boards. Morrow and Hunter trying to get at each other. And everybody from both teams gathers in the corner, including the two linesmen and the referee. I think Morrow jumped in there very quickly. It's Paul Coffey that's into the middle of it, too. Once Bossy was in there, Hunter was laying on a little shoulder, I think, a little bit too much weight on Mike Bossy. Morrow quick to jump in there. I mentioned that only once in Stanley Cup history has a team come back and been down three games to nothing. That was a way back in 1942. The Toronto Maple Leafs lost the first three games of the series to the Detroit Red Wings and back and took the next four, but that's the only time it's ever happened. Well, we take a look there of exactly why Mike Bossy was a little upset and why Ken Morrow was upset to see his very talented right winger on his hockey club getting mugged the way that he was by Dave Hunter. Glenn Sather and the orders and the penalty on the play to Hunter a holding call 1833 the time. So a four to one Islander lead and now a New York power play as the Islanders are about to take a three to nothing stranglehold lead in this best of seven Stanley Cup final series. Dennis Potvaff for New York. He's also been very prominent in this final series and in the playoffs as he usually is for the Islanders. Here's Butch Gorin. He's checked now Pearson. To Bob Nystrom. Nystrom in the final minute of this game. Into the corner, getting it to John Tonelli. Tonelli trying to work it in front. Tonelli dropping it to Pearson. Over to Potva. Into Tonelli, a drive, and Mo got a piece of that. Now Yerry Curry couldn't clear it. Here's Tonelli to put score it. To Nystrom, that shot was a dribbler and was wide to the net, and Mo grabbed it and held on. And these Islanders are putting on a show for the hometown fans tonight. They really are, Dan. And Goring, Tonelli, and Nystrom on that last ship, there was no way they were going to let the Oilers, it seems, out of their own end zone. Tremendous pressure. Great strength on that line. Lots of determination. They may not have the greatest talent, especially when you're speaking of Tonelli and Nystrom, but they have one very great point, Dan, and that is they've got tremendous character. Here's Dennis Potvin with a shot block. Now Blaine Sutter back to Potvin. To Thomas Janssen. Islanders on the power play and leading four to one. Blaine Sutter to Potvin. Shot. They score! Brent Sutter, I believe, deflected it. And it's 5-1 Islanders. Dennis Potvin let it go, Gary, but I think Brent Sutter may have deflected it. Well, we'll get an opportunity to 
take a look at it and let's watch in front of that net area but pot van he was the guy that took the shot let's follow that puck closely right in front of that net area well it was difficult to tell but it does appear that it went off of a skate anyway whether it was brent sutter's or Don Jackson will have to await the official announcement. Meanwhile, a power play goal for the Auditors, and it's 5-1 New York. Brent Sutter did get the goal on the deflection. Now with just seconds left, the Auditors clear up the center ice. The game is over. The New York Islanders defeat the Edmonton Oilers 5-1 and have a 3-0 lead in the 1983 Stanley Cup final. Do you think they're thinking Stanley Cup on Long Island? You see those cups all around this building, and it's no wonder why. Billy Smith, there's Al Arbor, the auditor coach. The last goal, Brent Sutter, his 10th of the playoffs. Dwayne Sutter and Potvah, the assists. 1942 the time, and now some of the Oilers are into it, but the fans in behind the Edmonton bench, including Glenn Sather. And there's a melee in behind the Edmonton bench. Some of the... Police over there. Sather is on the bench, but pointing to some spectators who apparently were bothering he and some of his players. So the final score, the Islanders five, Edmonton one. Our post-game activities coming right up. Okay, guys, I was a little off. We're not on Route 35. We're on Jackrabbit Road. Uh, yeah, we're not in uh, Pennsylvania. We're in West Virginia. West Virginia. They got some great looking steaks inside and Lowenbrow on tap. Let's go. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. He really lucked out this time. Yeah, I knew we were wrong. Ever get the feeling you'd like your car to perform as well as it can? That's why stunt driver Tom Anthony uses mobile detergent gasoline. After all, a clean carburetor performs better. It's as simple as that. Mobile detergent gasoline. For your everyday driving needs. Tonight, after a hockey, stay tuned for another fabulous edition of USA's Night Flight. Regular features like New Wave Theater. Also, Takeoff and Space Patrol will be on display. Plus, the electric music of ELO. That's Night Flight tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, here on USA. The Islanders have taken a commanding 3-0 lead in the series with a 5-1 victory, breaking it open in the third period. It was 1-1 going in, and then the Islanders, Bobby Bourne at 5-11, made it 2-1, what turned out to be the winning goal. Ken Morrow scored just a little over a minute later to make it 3-1 Islanders, and then at the closing stages, Edmonton out of gas, and the Islanders poured it in. Wayne Sutter, his ninth of the playoffs at 1643, and Brent Sutter, his tenth of the playoffs at 1942, and that was the final. The Islanders win it by the score of 5-1. And so now the Islanders have taken a commanding 3 to nothing lead. It was anybody's hockey game going into the third period, tied up at one apiece. Anders Kaller had scored the late stages of period number one, and then Yari Curry scoring in the early stages of period number two. Here are the two high-scoring teams. Edmonton, the highest-scoring team in the history of the NHL, battling to a 1-1 tie going into the third period. Before we come down and talk with the star of tonight's game, let's go upstairs to Dan Kelly. Okay, Al Albert. Final score, as you have told our folks, a 5-1 to one Islander victory, and the Islanders just owned the third period after Billy Smith stoned the Oilers in the first and second. Again, you know, you get almost get tired of, of saying how great Billy Smith is because it's true, but yet you run out of words to describe him, Dan. He has, again, played extremely well in this game, and he is the reason why put all the credit not necessarily to him, but am amongst all the rest of the Islanders. But when you come right down to picking the number one guy, Billy Smith is the man. 
Meanwhile, other people in the Islanders tonight, Ken Morrow, uh, Bob Bourne, on down the line, played brilliantly, and particularly in the third period when the Islanders just ran away from the Edmonton Hockey Club. No question about it, Dan. When you talk about the Islanders, you talk about a tremendous team effort. They've got great talent mixed with great character, and I think that is really the sign of a championship team. Let's face it, they have been champions the last three times, and it looks like they're going to be champions once again, unless a miracle can be pulled off. Can they wrap it up briefly on Tuesday night? You know, one thing about this Islander team, I think whenever they are in a clinching situation whereby they've got to win or they want to win bad, I think you'll see them win. Okay, that's uh, the thinking upstairs. Again, back to Al Albert and our star of the game, the guy that got the winning goal, Bob Bourne. And the guy who's the leading scorer for the Islanders in the playoffs with eight goals and 20 assists, Bob Bourne. And, Bob, it is not over yet. It's not over till it's over, said Yogi Berra, and you still have one more game, but uh, your prediction perhaps may be off. You said Islanders in six. Well, that's the safe approach. Uh, I'm still not saying we're going to win it uh, in four, and it could easily be in six. Uh, I think Edmonton's a great team, and, uh, uh, you know, we were lucky to come out of the second period tied 1-1, and it certainly wasn't a 5-1 hockey game. A tremendous frustration you could see on the part of the Edmonton Oilers. Well, I think we're changing uh, changing their game plan a lot. Uh, I noticed uh, in the third period in Edmonton, uh, in the second game, they started dumping the puck in, and I've never seen them do that. And then in the first period here, they were doing the same thing, and uh, I think that's a, a lot different from what they're accustomed to. Well, what opened it up in the third period is a 1-1 hockey game when Bob Bourne and his line with the Sutter brothers uh, pounced on Andy Moog. Bob, could you describe? I'm coming out of the corner here, and Steffi really lets one go, and it bounces up in the air. It comes right to my glove, and it just, I, I put it down on the ice and just stuffed it in the open corner. All right, we'll see it from an, another angle, and after this. Yeah, as you see, I'm coming in here, and uh, any sort of rebound, uh, either Dave Langevin and I would have been there to stuff it in the net. So that turned out to be the winning goal in this game. The Islanders then opened it up for a, a 5-1 victory. A 5-1 score certainly did not tell the story of tonight's game. No, that's for sure, especially the first two periods. But I thought we completely dominated them in the third period. And uh, I think our team kind of reacted the way we have all year when we have to go out there and win what we do. If anybody had told you before this series start that you would have a chance to sweep it in four, what would have you said to that person? I'd have probably bet them a thousand dollars that we wouldn't, uh, even though uh, we're not supposed to. But uh, you know, after seeing Edmonton, I can see why they play, uh, have gone as far as they have, and uh, they're not out of it. I mean, uh, you know, everyone says, "Ah, sweep, sweep, sweep," but uh, that's not. Gonna, I don't think it'll be the case, uh, even though we'll be awfully confident going in the fourth game. After three games, Wayne Gretzky, no goals. What has been the secret to the Islanders' success on the great one? Well, we're keeping him away from the front of our net. Uh, you know, he, he stands in there behind, and he tries to come out either side, and uh, we've definitely blocked those lanes off on him. And, uh, uh, of course, Brian Trotsky made a terrific play in the first two minutes tonight when uh, Wayne tried to come around the side of the net, and uh, Brian slid out and blocked with his chest. But we're just keeping him away from there. You know, two months ago, the Islanders going through a very rocky regular season. Uh, I would think many here, even in the Nassau Coliseum, would have never thought that you would even made the finals. Well, that's everyone else. That's all the people that jumped off our bandwagon there. Uh, I'm telling you, we had so many people down on us throughout the year that uh, everyone said, even I even had close friends that would tell me, hey, what the heck's going on with you guys? There's no way you'll do it. And uh, it, it's just uh, like Al says all the time, it's the character in that dressing room. And every one of those guys has character. And uh, we knew we could do it. Uh, our only concern was trying to get on a roll with about 15 games to go in the season. And we accomplished that. Well, the timing right for the Islanders so far this year. Bob Bourne with a winning goal, leading the Islanders to a 5-1 victory. And now a 3-0 lead in the series going to game four Tuesday right here at the Nassau Coliseum. And Bob, we thank you for joining us, for being our guest and chosen the USA's Stanley Cup star. We'd like you to have this quartz analog watch by Timex, the MVP in watches. Timex believes that precision time making and great design are not expensive, just rare. Timex, we make technology beautiful. And from Norelco, this close shaving Norelco Rototrack Razor. It shaves you as close as a blade without the nicks and cuts. The Rototrack Razor, tough on your beard, not on your face. From Norelco. And as an added gift, here's Ice Hockey by Activision, one of the hardest hitting, toughest video games for your Atari 2600. Our congratulations to Bob Bourne, the winning goal tonight, leading the Islanders to a 5-1 victory. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow.
by mobile detergent gasoline for your everyday driving needs. By Toyota, who reminds you that it's a good feeling to buckle up for safety. And by Levi's Menswear, the makers of Levi's Action Slacks. This has been a sports presentation of the USA Network.